Bradenton Southeast High School and Coach Paul Meckley have built one of America's great prep football programs. The 1993 Seminoles added the state championship to that proud tradition. Now in 94, Bradenton Southeast looks to add the ultimate stamp of greatness to its program, a repeat performance as state champion. It's the Bradenton Southeast Seminoles and Ocala Vanguard for the FHSAA 5A state championship next on Sports Channel. From Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach, Florida, Sports Channel presents the FHSAA High School Football Championships. Tonight, it's the 5A title game between Ocala Vanguard and Bradenton Southeast High School. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Vitell, along with Jim Yarbrough. Welcome to what should be a great night of high school football action as Bradenton Southeast goes for its second straight state title against Ocala Vanguard. And, Jim, sometimes you get an upstart in a state championship game, but not tonight. These are clearly the two best teams in this class in the state. Larry, uh, Vanguard's undefeated has a chance to finish as a champion that way. Uh, Bradenton Southeast was ranked number one in the country, that's not county, in the country by USA Today when this season started. They've only lost one game, so a tremendous battle out here tonight, I'm sure. And when you have great teams, you have great players, and one of the best quarterbacks anywhere in the country, Ocala Vanguard's Dante Culpepper. Well, Dante Culpepper, Larry, so impressive. The kid's 6'4", must be 220 pounds. Look at this, 30 touchdown passes in 94. He's a kid with a golden arm, almost 6,000 career yards passing the football for the Knights. And with Culpepper running this show, they've got a record-breaking offense. They really do, Larry, but they're also very balanced. Even though he's so talented throwing the football, they have an excellent running game, too. Uh, they're averaging almost 400 yards in total offense per game. And look at the points. These guys can run up some big numbers on the scoreboard. 545 points this year for Vanguard, but they're going up against a terrific defense. Bradenton Southeast and Coach Paul Meckley, they've been stopping people for a lot of years. Uh, what a great tradition at Southeast. 19 interceptions. This secondary, very talented. Uh, they had four interceptions by Alfonso Roundtree alone in the semifinal game last week. 45 quarterback sacks. Uh, one of their strengths is team speed on defense, so they can get after Culpepper, they think. Well, Bradenton Southeast with a great defense against a great quarterback. For Ocala Vanguard, their defense has been awfully good, and they're going against a very different kind of quarterback, Peter Warwick. For more on that, let's go down to the field and Art Schifrin. Well, Peter Warwick is as important to his offense as Culpepper is to his. Warwick missed the first three games of the season because of a hernia operation, and that included uh, Southeast's only loss of the year. In his first game back, they scored 55 points as he threw and ran for a combined five touchdown passes. This is quite a player. This is his first... Uh, First season as a quarterback, he played wide receiver last year. In fact, caught a touchdown pass in the state championship game and had a punt return for a touchdown called back because of a penalty. He's being looked at by several universities, including Florida, Florida State, Miami, Nebraska, Notre Dame, and Michigan, so he's got quite a college future ahead of him. But first, he's got one more high school game to play. That's the 5A state championship game. And we'll be back with the kickoff of that right after this on Sports Channel. Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach, Florida, where the 5A championship game is just a couple of minutes from getting underway. Ocala Vanguard undefeated. Bradenton Southeast with one loss to a 6A team. There you see Vanguard will be in the white and Bradenton Southeast in the orange. Kind of interesting. You've got orange and blue Seminoles from Bradenton Southeast. And let's listen to the coin toss. Okay. We're going to call this a head. That's a head. We're going to call this a tail, okay? You're going to call it loud in the air, if you would please, as the visiting team. Tails. Tails. He calls a tail. It is a head. Orange has won the toss. 
Orange wants to defer. Orange won. Orange defers. That gives White the choice. You want the ball. Okay, which way would you like to kick? Okay, put your backs over there, please. White over here. Orange won. They deferred. Orange is going to kick it. Fellas, come in one more time here for the speaking captains. Good luck tonight. Our referee talking to the players and conducting the coin toss, Wallace Wildenrat Jr. from the Midcoast Association in Coco, and his crew will be working this 5A state championship game. The Florida High School Activities Association sponsoring all the state championships in all sports. And here's Ocala Vanguard. The Knights at 14-0 under the direction of head coach Phil Yancey. They have had an outstanding season as 14-0 speaks loud and clear in the playoffs. They routed Jacksonville first coast. The last couple of games have been a little more competitive. Panama City, Rutherford, actually Springfield, Rutherford, just outside Panama City. St. Pete, Dixie, Hollins by 10. And then a very impressive performance, dominating a good Merritt Island team, 41 to 14. Phil Yancey, the head coach at Ocala Vanguard, he took over the Vanguard program in 1984. He now has a record of 68 up and 48 down, seven and three a year ago. This is his third trip to the state playoffs and his first to the state championship game. On the other side, Paul Meckley and the Seminoles of Bradenton Southeast High School. Ranked number 19 right now by USA Today among the nation's high school programs. They started the playoffs in style. No trouble at all with Tampa Jesuit. Then a tough game with Fort Pierce and Westwood. Often will be Geely, a traditional power fell quickly. And then St. Thomas Aquinas, a team we have shown you many times here on Sports Channel. A defeated team by 14. Paul Meckley, the head coach at Bradenton Southeast. This is his fourth state championship game his overall coaching record is superb at 127 and 34 in his first two years he was just 12 and 10 so since then he's won 15 and 24 he lost the state championship game in 1983 or rather 85 to emmett smith and pensacola escambia he lost the 88 championship game to kenny felder and niceville so two of the very best players that you could imagine going up against and again here tonight going up against a superb player in Dante Culpepper from Ocala Vanguard and early on it'll be interesting to see if Vanguard with their three and sometimes four wide receiver sets can get into a rhythm with that passing game. Yeah Larry I think they're going to come out with their four receiver set and put the ball in the air immediately. Uh, offensive coordinator Alex uh, Castaneda is uh, not a bit bashful about opening up uh, this ball game early with his passing game. Did you notice uh, the number of points that both of these teams have scored too? So we're looking for fireworks. A lot of people expect a shootout. Danny Boyd kicks off. The plane is not broken, so the return can come out by Johnny Presley. He runs into traffic at the 15 and is dropped around the 16-yard line. Excellent coverage for Southeast, led by Corey Sims, a defensive back. Offensively for Knights, the Knights of Vanguard, we've talked about Culpepper, but Johnny Presley, the tailback, a great weapon with 1,655 yards rushing and 21 touchdowns. Up front is where it counts. The leader of the line is their center, Doc Hodges. Hodges calls the plays or calls the assignments for that offensive line. Culpepper starts in a shotgun with three wide receivers. He sends one in motion. Culpepper looks downfield, excellent coverage, nowhere to throw, he'll run. Culpepper to the 25, runs out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Mark it at the 31, Dante Culpepper picks up 14 and an Ocala Vanguard first down. Defensively for Bradenton Southeast. Keep an eye on Reggie Williams, one of the best defensive players in the state of Florida. He will get after Culpepper, but he's got to get him when he gets close. In the secondary, their pass coverage will, is excellent. Alfonso Roundtree, four interceptions, as Jim mentioned, in the state semifinals, nine on the season. Vanguard forces uh, Southeast into man-for-man -man coverage, Larry, with their three and four receiver set. Culpepper wanted Presley in the flat, throws instead for his tight end, Javon Jenkins. Jenkins cannot come up with it. 
And it'll be second down and 10 from about the 31 yard line. You hear that Tomahawk chant, Florida, Florida State fans know it well. As Bradenton Southeast, the Seminoles wearing the Gator colors play that Tomahawk chant all the time during their ball games. There you see some of the fans from Southeast High School here to root on their team. Looking for back-to-back -back state championships. Paul Pepper runs the inside, handoff, Presley hit immediately and driven backward. Reggie Williams, Big Reg was all over it, and he stuffed that play for a big loss. Yeah, that was Johnny Presley, number 22, the tailback. Only 5'7", 169 pounds, but he's put up some huge numbers on offense running the football for the Knights this year. But right there, he got nothing as the defense was not... Uh, fooled at all with that uh, draw out of the shotgun. And it brings up third and long. They have to get the ball almost all the way to the 42-yard line. Three wide receivers. Culpepper flushed out of the pocket. Still on the run. Flips it downfield. He's got a man, and it goes through the hands of his intended receiver. That's Kenny Clark, a junior wideout. Had a shot at it, but couldn't bring it in. Well, Kenny Clark's had an excellent year as a junior wide receiver. He's really come on strong in the 94 season for the Knights. Rashad Jones, number four, their other talented wide receiver. These two guys, Larry, love to get the football, and Culpepper likes to put it in the air to him. And right there, almost had a chance for the big play. Greg Smith with an average 35.6 per kick will punt it away as Bradenton Southeast holds Ocala via Vanguard to a single first down. Smith just does get it away after a high lazy snap. And that ball will bounce into the wet turf and roll dead at about the 33 yard line. Excellent pressure coming from Southeast on that punt attempt. That was Brett Timmons, a senior linebacker, but he didn't quite get it, and as a result, a 39-yard punt. We're going to see that they, uh, the uh, Seminoles get excellent pressure right there on that punting effort. Almost got a piece of it. Uh, certainly, anytime you force the punter to hurry up, it's to your advantage. So Southeast goes on offense. They'll run the option with Peter Warwick. They switch the tight end. Joe McDonald over to the right side. Two wide receivers. Daryl McMillan gets the call. McMillan through traffic to the 45. Still on his feet into Vanguard territory at the Ocala Vanguard 46-yard line. <laughs> 21 yards for McMillan. Over 1,600 on the year, Jim. Yeah, that's through the playoffs. He's their go-to guy in this uh, ground game attack. These guys do not put the ball in the air that often. They love just to run right at you, and we can see why they have great success. Tremendous blocking at the point of attack, Larry. Number 75, Cedric Bell did a super job right there. Cedric Bell way downfield, looking for somebody to hit. They try the inside with the fullback, McDuffie. Not a lot there, he might have picked up three yards. Seminoles of Bradenton Southeast, we saw McMillan, he's a 205 pounder, he's only 5'9", but he can really motor with that football in his hands. And up front, we already mentioned Cedric Bell, 6'3", 309, he's just a junior, Jimmy, still growing. Yeah, I know he can raid the refrigerator anytime he wants at home, right? <laughs> Peter Warwick has thrown for just under a thousand yards. Excellent touchdown interception ratio for a guy who was a wide receiver a year ago. On the keeper, runs right into traffic. Larry Tucker is there to stuff it for the Vanguard defense, and it'll bring up a third down situation defensively for Vanguard. Keep an eye on their nose guard, Alfred Smith. He's only 222, but a very tenacious player. We'll see him in the backfield a lot today if Vanguard's playing well defensively. And in their coverage, Shoney Washington, an excellent cover guy, and he's made over 400 career tackles. He is a senior, 5'10", 194. That defensive unit uh, got four shutouts during the regular 94 season, held two other teams to only one touchdown. On third down, Warwick flushed out of the pocket, flag. that'll be holding. Warwick scoots close to the marker for a first down, but it's not going to matter much as the pressure came up the middle for Vanguard. And I believe Braden and Southeast will get a holding call. 
Not the boldest prediction I've ever made. <laughs> well, Larry, we saw the running ability of Warwick right there. He can get out of that pocket if he gets in trouble, and certainly holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat third down. Even though he picked up the first down, they're going to bring it back because of that holding violation, and Coach Meckley obviously disappointed with that call. Well, it ends up being about a 17-yard penalty because the holding was seven yards back of the line of scrimmage. So Bradenton Southeast with third down, and they've got to go over 20 yards. They need to get almost to the Vanguard 36 for a first down. Four wide receivers as Warwick will operate from the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. Gets away from it. Warwick will run. Peter Warwick to midfield. Gets another block. He's down the sideline. Flag on the play. A flag is thrown at around the 45-yard line. Looked like a push in the back against Southeast as Peter Warwick ended up running on that play for 30 yards. Larry, we're going to see a lot of this tonight because these two quarterbacks are so talented that when they get in trouble, they can make something happen. And right there, you saw Southeast get some big yardage. Blocking below the waist on the offense. Repeat third down. Warwick uh, was in all kind of trouble, Larry, but uh, you, we saw him uh, escape, and once he did, the secondary was in man-for-man -man coverage. Inside linebackers had fallen way back in coverage because of, of the shotgun formation they were facing, and there was no one there once he got in the open field. So they end up gaining two yards on the 17-yard run, less the 15-yard penalty. It is still third down. Warwick on the year, 12 touchdowns running with the football, his com combined rushing and passing just under 1,600 yards. Yeah, McMillan's the number one rusher, obviously, and then the number two is Warwick, the quarterback. Warwick again in trouble. Flings it out there, incomplete. Pass intended for Tamara Clark, and he got popped a little bit toward the end of the play by Keith Brigham. Was the rover. Well, you see Southeast in a very uncomfortable position, third and long. They don't like that situation. They're rarely in it, I'm sure. Uh, they love to pound the football right at you, and they're going to have problems when they have to pass because they're not used to it. Danny Boyd, we saw him kick it off all the way to the goal line to start the ball game. So these two defenses heard all week about the shootout in Daytona Beach, and they've come to play, and make their own statement about this state championship game. Boyd with a low, wobbly kick fielded by Von Keith Spencer at the 23-yard line, and he slides safely into third base at around the 27th. So just a four-yard return of a 36-yard punt. Well, just kind of uh, an exchange of uh, punts. Uh, no great uh, field position for either team so far. Nothing really happening on offense. And as you mentioned, the defenses are making a statement early. Of course, for Southeast, two good gainers called back by penalties, holding and then blocking below the waist. Dante Culpepper runs over to the sideline. Not sure if there's a, an equipment problem or what have you, but he'll talk it over with his coach. Dante Culpepper considered one of the best players in the country, a tremendous quarterback, a kid who was named the Florida Class 5A Player of the Year earlier this week. And earlier, his coach, Phil Yancey, talked to us about what a talent Dante is. Well, Dante's a great athlete. He's uh, our team leader. He's been a three-year starter for us. We had two good quarterbacks that came before him. Both of them were All-State, and Dante is also All-State. Uh, he just continues the tradition of fine quarterbacks at Vanguard High School. Jim, you mentioned you were right up next to him. They list him at 6'4", 213 or 214, but I think he passed that number a long time ago. Yeah, and you know, you know the coaches at the next level love that, that size as well as his talented arm. Vanguard will have a first down at the 27-yard line as they go on their second offensive possession. We have 7.45 to go in this opening quarter. The 5A state championship game, the defending champs, Bradenton Southeast against undefeated Ocala Vanguard. Heck of a matchup. Paul Pepper swings it out to his tight end. Javon Jenkins is hit at the 33 and dropped right away on a nice tackle by Jose Vegas, the strong safety. Jenkins with 16 receptions during the regular season 
he's a guy who has impressed some people who've looked at him on film. Good blocker, 6'3", 232 senior. Boy, everyone in the country would love a tight end who can block and catch. Sounds simple, but as we all know, there are very few tight ends around in college ball that can play and do it all. Hit in the backfield and fighting his way to the line of scrimmage, Johnny Presley. Carl Hines in there first for Southeast. Larry, talking about uh, tight ends, uh, Philip Yancey's big brother, Jim, was an excellent tight end at the University of Florida. And he was part of that uh, 1969 team that uh, won the Gator Bowl, went 9-2, and two, and he had uh, a big year for the Gators of tight end. So uh, Phil Yancey knows what's supposed to happen at the tight end position because he saw his brother Jim do it. But Johnny Presley apparently a little shaken up after that play. He went back in the huddle and then went down. They're up checking that le right shoulder or right arm. See what the problem is there for Johnny Presley. Oh, this would be a big blow to the Knights. Uh, obviously, Presley, as we mentioned, uh, 1,600 yards coming into this championship battle. Uh, he's the by far the leading ground gainer. Culpepper, the number two ground gainer in this offense when he chooses to run. He's also their fourth leading receiver. Hopefully he'll be back quickly as Johnny Presley shakes that right arm, trying to get a little feeling in it. Normally what you see when a guy's got a pinched nerve or some people will call it a burner. Looks like he'll be back. He's just going to shake it off, I think. Well, the medical team of Mattel and Yarborough have pronounced him okay. <laughs> Let's hope people a little more qualified get the same result. Culpepper pumps in trouble, gets rid of it. It's incomplete flag on the play at around the 29-yard line. But there you see the problem defensive have with Dante Culpepper. They had a clear shot at him, and two guys couldn't keep him from getting rid of the ball. Looks like uh, Reggie Williams, number 90, Larry, is going to have the most pressure on Culpepper. And yeah, he is uh, so strong. He, he's going to be able to get the by the offense. Get the ball off decline. anyway. It's fourth down. But uh, excellent defensive uh, stand there by Southeast, forcing the punt. Three possessions, three punts between the two high-scoring offenses of these combatants in the state championship game. Well, both defensive coordinators told me uh, prior to kickoff that hey, we got uh, we got a terrific defense and. Uh, Defense has won us a lot of ball games, even though our offense gets the headlines. Uh, watch out for these defenses, and boy, uh, they were right on the mark. The Bradenton Southeast has kept six teams to six points or less during the course of the season. There's a bad kick that'll hit right around the 47. There was pressure once again from Timmons. The ball's marked out of bounds at the 47 yard line. Just an 18-yard punt. I think Timmons is going to get a piece of this ball. No, he doesn't get close to it at all. But it was the concern of the pressure coming after Smith that forced him to get that ball off uh, perhaps a little more quickly than he wanted to and uh, sliced off to his uh, right. Well, let's see if Southeast can do something on its second offensive possession. Warwick on the option, pitches McMillan to the corner. Daryl McMillan to the 40. McMillan will be dragged out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. A big 23-yard pickup for Ocala, Van, for rather Bradenton Southeast into Vanguard territory. Well, this is the bread and butter of the Seminole offense right here. McMillan getting the ball on the pitch for Warwick. And we saw it, the option run to perfection right there. A, a lot of pressure on the night defense tonight to shut down this Excellent option attack. Market at the 30, the deepest penetration for either team early in this game with 6.06 to go opening quarter. Between the incomplete passes, the penalties, and the guys going out of bounds, that clock has hardly moved. Quick drop, throws the slant. He's got a man oh. in and out of his hands. What's the rule? Incomplete. Waiting for the officials to signal as Ted Bryant Tried to make a lunging catch on that slant route. Yeah, they come to the wide side of the field. Look at this hash mark in the high school game, Larry, how, how close it is to the sideline. And it really does give a wide field and a short side. And they come to the wide side right there. 
with that slant route, but uh, no catch on target, but the catch was not made. I tell you, Jim, we've seen a lot of games here at Daytona Municipal Stadium, and that may be as crowded as I've seen the far side grandstand for a ball game. There are not many seats left available on the Vanguard side of the field. Of course, Ocala Vanguard High School, only about an hour 15 from this stadium. Oh, McMillan submerged and dropped. The ball is down. It is not a fumble. Knifing in quickly to disrupt the play is the tight end. Javon Jenkins, Jenkins number 81. Ways. Javon Jenkins at 6'3", 232. Oh, he avoids the block of uh, number 24, Corey McDuffie. McDuffie runs right by him, and he's unblocked and makes a big hit in the backfield for the loss. So it's third down and long. Run inside the belt with Joe McDonald, and Zach Ballard says, no way you're getting through here. Might have picked up a foot, but that's about it. It's fourth down. Well, Joe McDonald at 217, the biggest of the backs that uh, Southeast has. Uh, they went to him on short yardage, and uh, that night defense, uh, Zach Ballard right there and his teammates said, hey, we're not going to give you the first down. Uh, you're going to have to come at us again, but uh, hey, they're lining up for the field goal instead. Well, we saw Danny Boyd reach the goal line with his kickoff, so the leg is strong enough. 47-yarder, it's blocked. Flag on the play. The ball is picked up for Vanguard at about the 23-yard line. Mac Calloway, Calloway still on his feet. He's got it to the 35, headed to the southeast sideline, and he's knocked oh. down there. Cedric Bell, the big guy at 309. He can move too, can he? And we've got another flag. We had a flag thrown as soon as the punt, uh, the, as soon as the field goal attempt was blocked. Then another thrown around midfield on the return. You would assume the one on the return is uh, an illegal block. There's also a flag over at around the 39-yard line. Well, what we do know is that Von Keith Spencer was the young man number 25, the DB defensive back, got in there to make that uh, block. Larry, he was all over that kick. Had no chance at all. So a blocked field goal, three flags on the play. Six-man line. That way is refused. That's the pre-possession okay. foul. We so. got a clip. We got a clip over here. And a clip where? Over here. Well, they'll take the clip right. at the 39, so the ball will be back at around the 24-yard line, but Vanguard will have the football. The illegal formation declined, and that's basically what they call a a pre-possession flag, which means that is separate. They're not offsetting because there was a change of possession on the play. We had a legal procedure on the offense. That penalty was declined. Following the change of possession, we had clipping on the receiving team. First down. All right, again, the blocked field goal. We're going to see number 25 by Keith Spencer get all over that football. I don't know that we'll be able to pick up the clip for you, but uh, the, the big point here is that they denied the uh, Southeast the chance to convert to the field goal and have the ball back. The rain is starting to fall once again here in Daytona Beach. Let's quickly get an update from Mark Schifrin on the weather. Well, you see that the, it is kind of raining a little bit, and the field is kind of slippery. Vanguard, all their players are wearing their regular cleats, so they're kind of slip sliding around over there. For Southeast, some of their players are wearing screw-ins, a little bit longer spikes to deal with the conditions. Completely personal decision whether or not they want to use those uh, screw-in cleats. Culpepper fakes the inside handoff. He's got a man downfield. It's a complete. Rashad Jones <laughs> dropped it. Rashad Jones headed upfield before he caught the ball. That was a big gainer for Vanguard, and it goes by the boards. Well, Rashad Jones, uh, the outstanding sophomore, uh, was a regular on this ball club as a freshman last year. Uh, rarely do you see this happen, but <laughs> right in his hands. The ball was a little bit underthrown, Larry. He had to turn back uh, to try and make the catch as we see this rain coming down uh, rather heavily right now, which might impact this uh, passing game that the Knights employ. Culpepper struggling to connect with his receivers, but that one certainly should have been caught. 
Paul Pepper again throws down the right sideline, incomplete over the back. Kenny Clark trying to make the catch and a flag is thrown. And you would assume that'll be interference on the Vanguard receiver. Well, Alfonso Roundtree, the young man that had four interceptions against uh, Fort Lauderdale Aquinas last week, was in coverage right there. Now the secondary for Southeast, very good. It's going to be hard to get open receivers. Pass interference on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Lost it down. Third down. Well, you were paying attention, weren't you? That was uh, <laughs> definitely offensive interference. So the wide receivers have had some problems dropping the ball and then interfering. They're not helping out Culpepper at all right now. And that ends up being about a 12-yard penalty and a loss of down. So it is third and very long back at the 12-yard line. They have to get up to the 35. Four wide receivers, and they've got Jones now. Rashad Jones, I is that him at quarterback? No, oh, that's Culpepper. Looked like a four. Doesn't matter. He goes nowhere. Reggie Williams. Didn't buy the inside fake. And Vanguard will have to punt it away again. 3.59 to go in the first quarter. And it's really been all defense other than a few penalties. Yeah, so let's uh, highlight one of those guys that is playing so well. And it's Reggie Williams at defensive end for Southeast. And maybe uh, with these rainy, sloppy conditions, the, the night offense is not going to be able to have the success that they're used to having uh, in the air tonight. Big punt now for Greg Smith, who has struggled on his, particularly his last kick. This time, no real big pressure coming at him. Gets away a much better kick. Fielded right at midfield by Peter Warwick. Warwick runs into some traffic, and he's dropped by Shoney Washington at about the 44. But Bradenton Southeast will start off at the Vanguard 44-yard line on this next offensive possession. 37 yards on the kick and just a seven yard return let's go down to the field to Art Schiffer well as the rain continues to come down Vanguard coach Phil Yancey told me on a night like this they would normally use 18 balls rotating them in and out to try and keep it dry only six balls in tonight's game but the referees tell me they'll do the best they can to keep it dry as far as Southeast the only game they lost this year in fact the only game they've lost in two years came on a rainy night like this when they put the ball on the ground three times it was against Sarasota Riverview they lost 15-10 to a terrific Riverview team and their coach, John Sprague. Well, when you talk about great high school football, Jim, you got to talk about Sarasota High and Bradenton Southeast, Bradenton Manatee, Sarasota Riverview, and Booker. Great football played in that part of the state. Yeah, there's something in the water down there because uh, these kids and the programs are as outstanding as any area in the country at any level. Uh, just some tremendous talent and coaching in that part of Florida. Of course, Arcadia DeSoto plays uh, big-time football down in that area, too, Larry. Indeed, they have for many years. From the 44, no gain on that play as they ran inside. Again inside, McDonald kind of barrels his way to the 39-yard line. Zach Ballard leads a host of tacklers for Ocala Vanguard. Also, Justin Moore in on the play, and it's third down. Shane Case, number 72, an offensive tackle. Comes in at 5'9", 230, doing a nice job up front. And Coach Meckley's not used to this. He's used to seeing his team jump on the other guy rather quickly. And uh, nobody's jumping on anybody right now. These defenses are really controlling this battle. On third down, the Seminoles can go inside. There's not much there. Peter Warwick. Looks over to the sideline saying, I don't want to run inside anymore. As it does not work, Englehart makes the stop for the Vanguard defense. Englehart only a junior, Larry, so he's going to have a, another big year for this program uh, next season. And on fourth down and it looks like a long three, it appears Southeast is going to go for it. So here's the first key fourth down gamble of this ball game scoreless tie as we near one minute to go here in the opening quarter warwick drops straight back looking deep down the sideline incomplete again it was ryan ronk diving for the ball down the right sideline but he couldn't get it 
And it'll go back to Ocala Vanguard, and the Vanguard Knights will get their best field position of the day. Which isn't all that great, but they'll take what they could get right now in terms of field position. But uh, the Seminoles trying to go for the big strike there on fourth and about three yards. Uh, Vanguard, they thought perhaps they could catch them stacking up for the run, sneak a receiver behind them, but uh, couldn't get it done. The whistle comes in from the sideline. They're going to tell the band to be quiet while they're calling signals, I think, is what's going to happen. Yes, here the official comes over to the sideline. A little warning to the band. I've yet to see Dead it. ball foul. Encroachment oh, okay. on the defense. Five yards. First down. You ever saw a flag throw? Did you? No, I, I didn't see it either. I didn't see a tuba player in the neutral zone there, but the, <laughs> somebody got in there. You just don't like that uh, Tommy Hawks there, do you? Not particularly, I'll admit it. There's Presley, obviously he's okay. Johnny Presley picks his way up near midfield for a first down. Alfonso Roundtree, along with number 45, Chauncey Green, make the stop for Bradenton Southeast. Of course, the reference to that sound is nothing personal, but Larry Mattel happens to live in Gainesville, so that's what I was teasing him about. Yeah, and you, like it's your favorite too. <laughs> Well, it's the Atlanta Braves. That's how I look at it. Here you see the Southeast offense getting some instruction on the sidelines. 32 seconds to go opening quarter. Vanguard looks to enter Seminole territory for the first time tonight. Culpepper pumps, looking deeper. He throws the ball incomplete. Had a little hitch and go going on down the sideline. Rashad Jones complains that he might have been grabbed on that hitch and go move. And we've got a flag. It'll be offensive holding on Vanguard. The flag around the 42-yard line. So back Vanguard goes again. Each team, when they've had some success offensively, penalties have killed. Holding by the offense. Repeat first down. Well, Thomas Jefferson in the secondary, the defensive back, uh, that name has a ring to it, doesn't it? Uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, he's only 5'9", 163-pound junior, but he was in excellent position on that deep route that Vanguard tried to spring on him right there. Probably the third corner, right? Backing up Washington and Adams. No comment from the... I went right over my head. I... I try to run the little cross buck with Presley, and he might have picked up a yard to the 33 on what will be the final play of the first quarter in this Florida Class 5A state championship game. Well, coming here to Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach, Florida for the state title, Ocala Vanguard and Bradenton Southeast, the two highest scoring teams in the state. They've topped 40 a number of times, but neither one has been able to move the ball consistently in this opening quarter. We'll be back with second quarter action in the FHSAA 5A title game after this timeout on Sports Channel. A scoreless tie after the first quarter of the Florida Class 5A championship game. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the Florida High School Activities Association solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Along with Art Schifrin and Jim Yarbrough, Larry Vitell with you from Daytona Beach Municipal Stadium. Hope you're enjoying the game. If you like defense, you are. If you like offense, you're ready for things to change just a little. Culpepper on the naked bootleg avoids one tackler 
and then gets the ball up around the 40-yard line. So he gets back about seven of that penalty, but it'll be still be third down and about 20 for the Vanguard Knights. Reggie Davis, the free safety, makes the tackle for Southeast. Well, Larry, uh, Faust DeLazer, the defensive coordinator of the Seminoles, that time sent his cornerback, Alfonso Roundtree, off the short side of the, uh, the field right there, trying to put pressure on Culpepper, but Culpepper quickly bounced outside of Roundtree and almost made something happen. Culpepper tried to step up, but Reggie Williams was there along with Terrence Houston to wrap him up for another loss. So Vanguard can't get anything going and they will have to punt for the fourth time in this ball game. Well, one of the things that makes this defense uh, of Southeast so strong is, is team speed. And right there you saw Reggie Williams quickly getting upfield. Two deep zone, linebackers man for man. Just an excellent job by both defensive units, really, uh, especially right now Southeast against uh, the big time passing game of uh, Dante Culpepper. Flag thrown on the snap as the ball's field goes by Warwick at the 25, and he will not get away. It looked like Peter Warwick was getting close to the corner, but instead he was tripped up by Keith Brigham and will be dropped right there. We'll check out the flag. Could be another one of the illegal formations. And that's what it is against Vanguard. They got a pretty good kick that time. 36-yarder. Only one on the return, so I would assume. Illegal procedure on the offensive team, not set for one second, repeat fourth down. Yeah, I would assume they would make him re-kick it, and that's exactly what Paul Meckley is going to do in this situation. Yeah, what a great career he's had, huh? Just uh, unbelievable, the success he's had at the Southeast. Uh, six years he was an assistant coach before a 14-year career as the head guy saying he knows his way around the school. Another decent rush, another pretty good kick, a wobbler that hits at the 40, they'll let it roll inside the 30, and the end result might be pretty much the same as what it was before. Mark it down at the 27, so the difference is one yard because of an excellent punt of 39 yards with no return, and that's where Southeast will go on offense with 10.53 to go here in the first half. Well, we haven't talked about uh, David Hodges, Larry. He's the defensive coordinator for the Knights. He's the guy that led this defensive unit, uh, as we mentioned, to four shutouts during the regular season, held two other teams to only six points, and those six points were on kickoff returns. So this team could have had six shutouts, and another team only got a field goal. So Vanguard, uh, truly excellent defense all season long. And both defenses have really made a statement today on the toss sweep mcmillan avoids two tacklers and then runs through the attempt of zach ballard but ballard would not let go it's a gain of about 12 and a first down Daryl mcmillan moving the change for southeast number 25 von keith spencer the defensive back gets blocked out on that side of the uh, formation and mcmillan 205 pounds of uh strength and agility is able to get up one of the few first downs of the evening really huh work on the delay cross buck action there's mcmillan he's got 10 he's down the sideline into vanguard territory at the 39 yard line so give him 21 more and another first down now let's see if we can look at the point of attack to the left of your screen. They almost have a collision in the back. Whoa, look at the big block by 75, Cedric Bell. Did you see that's what you call a KO at the point of attack? And McMillan quickly down the sideline, but a huge block by Cedric Bell, number 75. Basically, the only offense in this game so far has been Daryl McMillan, averaging 15.4 per carry. From the 38, Warwick, he pitches it late. It's a loose ball. McMillan falls on it at about the 43-yard line. Now, that is technically a loss of five for Warwick, 
and not McMillan because McMillan did not have a chance to advance the football. Well, I wasn't able to pick up the number of the Vanguard defender. I believe it might be uh, number 55, Chris Englehart. Englehart does a super job. He's a defensive tackle shooting the gap right there. Just destroyed the play completely and almost created a turnover for his team. You know, Larry, both these teams are around the plus 24, plus 25 mark for the, for the year in terms of uh, takeaways, first giveaways, plus 25. That's why you have a championship season when you do those type of things. Well, Ocala Vanguard was set defensively, but Southeast did not have the personnel they wanted, so the Seminoles use a timeout with nine minutes, 17 seconds to go here in the first half. The Ocala Vanguard Knights and Bradenton Southeast Seminoles in a scoreless tie despite two very talented quarterbacks. Dante Culpepper, we've talked a lot about. Peter Warwick, who is an all-state wide receiver last year and is expected to be a great wide receiver at the next level, has become a quarterback this year for Bradenton Southeast. Coach Paul Meckley spoke with us earlier about what Peter Warwick means to his football team. Peter Warwick does a lot of great things. God has blessed him with a great deal of athletic talent. He can run the ball well, but the thing that I don't think a lot of people realize is that he does have the ability to throw the football pretty well also. I know as we practice day in and day out, we get a chance to see that a lot more than other people do. So whether or not we can do it this evening in this kind of weather, we'll be waiting to be seen. Well, so far the answer is no. But then again, Dante Culpepper and Ocala Vanguard have not been able to throw the ball effectively. They can't get their receivers open. And the one time they had a chance to hit a big play in the passing game, it was dropped. Warwick missed the first three games of the 94 season, recovering uh, from a hernia problem. And, uh, you know, they were glad to get him back in a great shape uh, for the fourth game of the season. And he's been in perfect health since. On second down and long. Warwick back to throw, looking for the tight end. He's off the fingertips of David Jenkins. Jenkins running down the right side. The 6-1 junior was open, but just a little too strong. Yeah, this ball's right on target. But uh, once again, we see the receivers on both ball clubs really having problems coming up with the catch tonight that time uh, it was David Jenkins the tight end for Southeast that uh, just couldn't make the fingertip catch well the Seminoles faced with another third and long they are 0 for 5 on third down out of the shotgun Warwick steps out of trouble still on his feet Warwick to the 40. Peter Warwick inside the 30, run out of bounds at around the 28, and they'll spot it very close to the first down marker. They'll have to bring the chains over. Keith Brigham runs him out of bounds, but a 14-yard gain for Peter Warwick. Now this is a delayed blitz by number 43, Zach Ballard right there. Ballard thinks he has uh, Warwick dead, but <laughs> Warwick just bounces outside, and the containment's broken down. One of the defenders on the outside should have been responsible for containment right there when Ballard couldn't make the uh, the sack. Uh, they were, got, up, got out of the pocket and uh, looks to have maybe picked up the first down. They're going to measure. It'll be less than a half a football either way. And they're short by about four to six inches, something like that. Well, maybe three. <laughs> I don't know how big his hands are. But it's fourth and short, and the question is, do they try the field goal that was blocked earlier on that other attempt, or will they go for it? Looks like they're going to go right away. Yeah, I would think with the kind of running game that the Seminoles have, uh, they're not going to hesitate to uh, run that uh, ball right off tackle, perhaps, or maybe the option. But the, certainly the running game is their forte, and uh, that's the major asset that got him here in this championship battle was the powerful running game. And right behind Cedric Bell, number 75, the big 300 pounder. Yeah, I would think they would go off uh, right tackle. Let's see what they do. They're in the eye. 
Where you got the lead blocking the fullback. McMillan has been the best offensive threat in the game for either team so far. He's the tailback. They load up on the inside. Warwick maybe trying to draw him offside and then calls timeout. Still 11 seconds on the play clock. So we've got a timeout on the field with nine minutes and three seconds to go in the first half of the Class 5A state championship game. The scoreboard is still lonely. We'll be right back. Goose eggs on the board. Uh, let's go down to Art uh, Schifrin for a report along the sideline. Art? Well, we talked about the explosive offense of these two teams, and we ex really kind of expected some fireworks, but the defense is maybe a little underrated. Each defense is only yielding a little over six points per ball game. So let's send it back upstairs. Okay, Art, fourth down an inch. They are loaded up in the block. McMillan, first down and more down to the 21-yard line. Daryl McMillan's got it first down as Bradenton Southeast gets deeper into Vanguard territory than they've been all day long. Let's go back to Art. With those goose eggs up on the scoreboard, Vanguard is doing it without Jermaine Roberts, their leading quarterback sacker. He has missed most of the game with a bruised groin, and he has not been back in the game since early in the first quarter. Larry, on the last play, Josh Hunter, number 74, offensive guard, made an awesome block on the right side. Uh, Hunter playing alongside Cedric Bell. Josh Hunter just uh, exploded out of the blocks on that short yardage play, made it happen at the line of scrimmage. And both those guys are juniors, so they may run right a lot next year, too. Fumble, loose ball at the 25, still loose. It looks like Vanguard's got it at the 27-yard line. Justin Moore disrupted the play. And it looks like he's got the ball at the bottom of the pile as well. So Vanguard's defense comes up with a play as Warwick and McMillan seem to lose a little something on the exchange. Well, let's take another look. As we know, Justin Warwick comes up with the recovery. The ball looks like it's in the belly properly, but there's no handle to be grabbed by McMillan. For whatever reason, McMillan just simply dropped the football. It looked like a good exchange uh, from Warwick right into the belly of his tailback, but for whatever reason, the ball was dropped and uh, a huge turn of events and a turnover for uh, Vanguard. So Cala Vanguard goes on offense around the 27-yard line. Spinning Johnny Presley gets about four or five yards before he is tripped up. Presley, who averages seven and a half per carry, has had a lot of trouble getting running room today. They'll mark him down at the 30, just a three-yard pickup. Well, you keep thinking one of these offenses is going to explode at any time, but uh, hey, it's the guys on defense that are really making the things happen out here tonight, not the guys on offense. Well, remember a year ago at this time, Bradenton Southeast had a terrific quarterback in John Reeves. Warwick is a wide receiver. They played Panama City Bay. Everyone thought high scoring, and it was a 20 to 17 game. This game may be lucky to get that many points on the board as Culpepper's run out of bounds after a two-yard gain, and we have a flag back at the 25-yard line, and the Vanguard linemen are backing up once again. Larry, one of the things that uh, perhaps is adding to the uh, futility of these offenses tonight is uh, some sloppy play. A lot of penalties and drop passes, motion too. On the offense, two men in motion at the same time. Repeat second down. There you see another mental mistake made by the offense, and we've seen a couple of uh, physical mistakes where the ball was simply dropped by wide receivers in the open. 78 yards in penalties already in this game, and we're not even midway through the second quarter. Dante Culpepper leads his Vanguard Knights to the line of scrimmage. Second down, and they need almost a dozen. Quick hitch thrown on the right side to Kenny Clark. And Clark will be run out of bounds at the 32. He'll pick up about seven. Kenny Clark, 57 catches this year. Look at that average, 22 yards per catch. But they haven't had anything like that in the passing game this evening. Rashad Jones with 42 catches, averaging over 17 yards per catch. 
coming into to tonight's game. On the year, Culpepper averages right around 19 per completion. Can't throw the quick hitch left side. He'll run with it. Dante Culpepper's got a first down, and he goes forward to about the 42-yard line before he is caught by the defense. Reggie Williams once again. Chauncey Green also over there defensively. A great hustle by Reggie Williams, number 90. First, he's going to rush Culpepper, trying to work up the field against number 78, Alfred Smith. Now he doesn't just quit. Watch the play from his vantage point back there. He hustles downfield and almost stripped the ball away. Did you see him try and rip the ball from behind uh, out of Culpepper's uh, grasp? And we have a timeout on the field with seven minutes and 17 seconds to go here in the second quarter. The 5A state championship game here in Daytona Beach, Florida at Municipal Stadium where these two teams are Trying to go home with a title right now. Either one would be happy to go home with a point because neither one has any offense to this state. Be sure to join Sports Channel for continued coverage of Florida High School Championship action all year long right here on Sports Channel. Florida's brightest young student athletes battle for championship titles in all classifications in all sports and we're with them every step of the way. The FHSAA High School Championships only on Sports Channel. And the Seminole cheerleaders from Bradenton Southeast High School on hand what has become kind of a gloomy atmosphere. We've got a little bit of fog going for us here at Daytona Beach Municipal Stadium. It rained quite extensively from about five o'clock until just a little bit before kickoff. But the field uh, seems to be in excellent condition. They've done a great job here in Daytona Beach uh, manicuring this field for these championship battles and it doesn't seem to be any worse for wear so far, but we hope this rain will discontinue. Try the quick sprint draw, and there's nothing there at all. Willie Sands, Quentin Allen just stuffed it immediately for Southeast, and it'll bring up a third and long once again for Vanguard. Now, Willie Sands, number 78, only a sophomore. Looks like no one blocked him at all. Must have been a, a breakdown in assignments up front right there because he was literally untouched. Now you look at the young uh, sophomore, big kid, too. We saw his his frame prior to kickoff as we were on the field, and he's he's going to be a huge kid. Corner blitz is coming. They pick it up. Culpepper gets the pass completed on the left side and for a first down. Vanguard catch made by Ivan Whitaker. He's a senior wide receiver. Doesn't play most of the time. Only his eighth catch of the season, but a big one as he gets a first down at the Bradenton Southeast 46-yard line. Well, Dante Culpepper says, thank you very much. I need some help from my wide receivers. I'm running for my life out here. I'm trying to make something happen. I need somebody to help me and come up with a big catch. And there it was, Whitaker, the senior, uh, getting them in Seminole territory. Inside handoff, Presley running right side. Thought he had some room, and then Willie Sams showing some excellent lateral pursuit. Boy, that kid's just a sophomore. Javon Jenkins makes a nice block at the top of your screen right there. Nice block on uh, Reggie Williams at the point of attack right there. Presley, the little guy at 5'7", 169, with excellent quickness, obviously. Bursting through that hole, he didn't need much, much of a seam, and Got what he needed there. Gain of maybe a yard. Flags all over the place. They had a false start on the right side of the offensive line, and it'll be second and 14. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Repeat second down. Yeah, number 78, Alfred Smith, uh, is going to just move a little bit to see him move just slightly uh, there was some action on the defense and they were screaming and yelling at him probably trying to get him to flinch got to have a lot of poise as an offensive lineman especially out there in the tackle position when you're just prior to the snap and every everything is getting ready to happen Inside, five and a half minutes to go, first half. They fake the inside handoff. Culpepper wants the receivers. He's got his tight end, Jenkins. 
Down the right sideline and out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Vegas and Roundtree make the tackle, but it's a 19-yard gain. And a first down for Vanguard, their best penetration of the night. This is a little bit of a delay to the tight end. You see the action as Culpepper walks to the right side of the formation, allowing Jenkins time to get out in the flat. The wide receiver on that side of the field, the twin receivers, look at him clear out the area, running downfield, trying to draw attention to themselves and let the tight end slip out into the flat. Jenkins nicely coming up with the catch there as he was wide open. From the 30-yard line, Culpepper looking deep, goes deep left side. That ball is intercepted. Reggie Davis makes the catch in the end zone. He brings it out to the 15, the 20, up the oh. sideline. And boy, does he mean head on with the tight end Jenkins at the 26. But Reggie Davis, who intercepted two passes in the state championship game last year, picks off one here as a senior, his sixth of the year. Well, when the Vanguard defense was threatened, they created a turnover. When the Seminole defense is threatened here, they're going to create a turnover. Again, just super play by the defensive units. Right there, it's Reggie Davis. And watch this hit. Listen to it. Oh, he pays the price as he gets bounced out of bounds right there. But he's glad to have that football tucked under his arm and giving it back to his offense. So each team gets inside the 30. Each team turns it over. We are still scoreless with 4.56 to go. Southeast goes with Darrell McMillan. Nothing there. Bounces it outside, looking for the line of scrimmage. He won't get there. It's a loss of about four yards. Shoney Washington, number 31, with excellent pursuit. Also over there, Larry Tucker, a defensive tackle. Yeah, Tucker at 5'11", 247, Larry. He really hustles over there. Just super defense again. Uh, David Hodges, the defensive coordinator, has got to be thrilled with his unit right now. Look at the... The excellent uh, swarming to the football, Aaron Powell, number 54, also in there to make a hit. Got to feel bad for number 72, Justin Moore. He got great penetration, got buried on a double-team block. Gets no credit for the tackle, but deserves credit for stringing out that play. Warwick throws, the defensive back fell down, and it'll be a first down. Ryan Ronk, the senior wide receiver on the catch, then ran up the sideline for first down yardage at about the 38. Well, the running game wasn't uh, executing, and uh, they come back with a quick hitch, and uh, there's their first down. Not a whole lot of first downs tonight, as we mentioned, and as you've seen, these defensive units just uh, doing everything they can to keep the other guy's offense on, on the bench. Warwick on the option, loads of room. Warwick inside Vanguard territory will be run out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Mac Calloway makes the tackle that saves a touchdown, but Peter Warwick broke it loose for 33 yards. Look to the right of your screen, and number 54, Aaron Powell, is going to get pinned inside by number 8, Joe McDonald. Joe McDonald makes a super block on the defensive tackle right there, allowing that play to happen. From the 29-yard line, scoreless tie, 340 to go first half. Bradenton Southeast on the move. McMillan gets it outside. Great block from Cedric Bell. McMillan to the 10. McMillan out of bounds at the three-yard Cedric Bell with a sensational block to lead the way. Well, we had seen this play run a little bit earlier. I think it was on the last drive, and we also said the same thing. Great block by Cedric Bell, and we're going to see it again. The right tackle, number 75. Look at him pull. Also pulling is Josh Hunter, 74. But, no, oh, goodbye. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big body right there. That's a decleater. Cedric Bell with a big hit. Whoa, and he keeps on moving, keeps on chugging. He's like a train out there. They mark him out of bounds at the four-yard line, and then we've got a false start on the left side of the Bradenton Southeast line. So instead of first the and goal, goal at the four, it'll be the nine. start on the offense. 
Carl McMillan has had an excellent game, averaging over 11 yards per carry. Well, he's had a couple of big runs. Uh, really, we keep paying tribute to the both defenses. He's got his numbers, but uh, this is the first real time that uh, the Knight defense has been so challenged that they might actually give up points. 3.30 to go here in the first half. Running right side, McMillan to the five to the three yard line. And now they'll mark him inside the two. I thought he was down back there around the three or so. Apparently he didn't touch. And so he got about seven yards at second and goal. Von Keith Spencer, 25, does his job. Watch him get upfield right there, forcing the ball carry of McMillan inside where hopefully Spencer has some help from his teammates to make uh, make the hit. But uh, hey, this uh, offense is really cranking right now for the Seminoles. Second down and goal. Scoreless tie. McMillan. Touchdown, Seminole. His 29th rushing touchdown of the year, and we have our first points in this 5A title game. Now they line up in the power eye. They got uh, two lead backs leading McMillan into the end zone uh, Chauncey Green number 45 and Carl Hines number 41 super job blocking right there as they help get the first touchdown of the night for the Seminoles for anybody really extra point he hooks it wide left Danny Boyd too much leg swing as he just yanked it to the left and we take another look at the touchdown See if we can see those lead blocks up front. Yeah, there you, there you see one of them by uh, Chauncey Green, 45. But uh, once again, running behind Josh Hunter, 74. Behind Cedric Bell, 75. Hey, that'll get it done when you have uh, big kids that can block like that. Go down to the field to Art Schifrin. Well, I was talking with Warwick just a few minutes ago while the Southeast offense was on the sideline. The coaching staff was pushing him to keep the offense pumped up and keep him optimistic. He told me when we get the ball back, we're going to score. True to his word, he took them rapidly down the field for the first points of the game. Oh, well, he's clairvoyant. In addition to being a superb athlete, six plays, 74 yards. Big run by Warwick and another by McMillan as they quickly went from their own yeah, about their own 40 yard line down to the four yard line a couple of back-to-back -back plays worth about 50 of that 74. Art mentioned at the top of the telecast the list of schools it sounded like he was reading off the final top 10 poll with the list of schools that are actively recruiting Peter Ward. What a tremendous athlete he is. Only our second kickoff, both by Boyd, and that is into the end zone. You can't return it from the end zone in high school, so whether he caught it or not, Kenny Clark could do nothing with it. And let's see if Dante Culpepper can do something with this final two minutes and 50 seconds and three timeouts remaining here in the first half. Paul Meckley and his Seminoles of Bradenton Southeast going after a second consecutive state championship. Last time Vanguard, of course, was in the playoffs was 1991. They were eliminated in the, in the first round, so a, a huge edge in playoff experience uh, to Southeast. Last time Southeast was not in the playoffs was 1984. Paul Pepper tries to throw a fade down the sideline. Flag on the play. Was it intercepted? We're waiting for a sign from the official. Was it caught by anybody? Yeah. They give the interception to Roundtree. Now check out the flag. Who's it on? Yeah, Alfonso Roundtree clearly had the ball intercepted. Pass interference on the offense. That's refused. Pass is intercepted. First down. Number five, Alfonso Roundtree just in the pocket of the wide receiver. Can we pick up the number there? Oh, it's Kenny Clark, number five for the Knights. Alfonso Roundtree, the, the young guy that had the four intercepts in the semifinals last week, comes up with a fifth in two games tonight. I'm, I'm watching the official on the play, looking for him to point one way or anything and never got a sign. But they get the interception. It was a good catch made by Roundtree. And now Bradenton Southeast with the lead and the football. 
Option right. Warwick, through traffic, still on his feet. Look out. You're not going to catch Peter Warwick from behind. Touchdown, Seminoles. Flag on the play. That won't. That touchdown may not count because he taunted before he crossed the goal line. Let's check out the officiating here. Now, we know that they try and restrict this type of thing in high school football, but uh, what will be the call? Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offensive team. The touchdown is good. We penalize on the side. They penalize on the extra point. I don't understand that. If taunting is a penalty and the play is still going on, that's the only time when you can get a penalty during a play and you still get the benefit of the play, I suppose. Well, I'm not familiar with the high school rule either, but uh, just a great effort as he maintains his balance in the hole. He was all but tackled. And he's going to do a little bit of uh, showboating here around the eight-yard line as number 78, uh, Alfred Smith, is doing his best to catch up. Uh, you don't like to see that type of thing, but they, they get excited. Danny Boyd with the 35-yard extra point, and that one is also no good and wide to the left. A much better kick, but the same result. So a pair of touchdowns in the latter stages of this first half, and as a result, it is a 12-0 lead for Bradenton Southeast, and there's still lots of time for Vanguard. 2.15, and the Knights have their three timeouts. Obviously, you know, Jim, I don't think they should call back a touchdown over it. It just seems odd if you throw a flag in the process of a play that it doesn't count. But I guess they're trying to stop those uh, those celebrating things earlier and earlier in life, huh? Yeah, and I, I agree with them. I mean, uh, spontaneous uh, celebrations are, are great. But, uh, you know, hey, this game's... <laughs> when I was playing uh, in the NFL, we had a, a rookie do that... Uh, one time on a kick return in the beginning of the game, then he went and sat down the rest of the game and I had to play against uh, Jim Marshall and Alan Page and they were all mad for the next three and a half quarters. So, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't like to see one of your guys get the other guys mad. You would like to, hey, you know. Especially if the other guys are as good as Alan Page and Jim Marshall. Yeah, hey, that's tough enough on, a, on any day when they're mad at you, it's a uh, oh. Line drive kick hits at the 15, picked up by Kenny Clark at the three yard line. Clark looking for some running room, doesn't find any, and he'll be driven backwards by the Bradenton Southeast coverage. Joe McDonald, who is a combination fullback tight end for the Bradenton Southeast Seminoles, makes the stop. It's a 17 yard return, and with the ball at just outside the 21 yard line, Ocala Vanguard will get perhaps one more chance to try to move the football here in the Late stages of the first half, trailing by a dozen. They really need to get their poise on offense right now. They've been uh, shell-shocked here uh, with two rapid scores uh, by Southeast after Southeast wasn't really getting anything done. They were going to run the inside handoff, but Culpepper juggled the snap, and then he's buried by Willie Sams along with Reggie Williams. And it'll be a loss of about four. The clock runs down to 1.35 to go here in the first half 12 I, nothing Bradenton Southeast Larry I would think the critical thing is for Vanguard to get into the locker room now without giving Southeast another chance you know do not give them another chance because they might uh, they might uh, get a third score here quickly so really a lot of pressure on the Knights to to pick up a first down run the clock out on second and long Culpepper Looks downfield, he throws down the side, it is batted away and incomplete. Almost another pickoff for Alfonso Roundtree. I don't think I'd be throwing in his area that much. <laughs> this kid, this kid and the football are like, uh, you know, a couple of magnets. He's just right wherever the football is. And the problem is they usually have Reggie Davis, they're all state and all American free safety on the other side of the field protecting deep. Well, that stopped the clock too, didn't it? So now we got a minute. It's going to be harder to run this uh, clock out uh, for Vanguard right now as they're facing third and about uh, 11, 12 yards, something like that. They must get almost to the 32-yard line. They'll run inside and crack it back down at the 22 or 23 yard line is Presley Sams, the man on the play defensively. Uh, 
I would call a timeout if I was uh, Coach the Coach Meckley, and I think he did, or did he not? Yes, yes, he did. With 51 seconds to go in the first half, he stops the clock, and we have seen Timmons, number 10, get close on a couple of punt attempts by Greg Smith, and we'll see if he can get close to it in this situation. And we see, I'm sorry, sorry that's a defensive coordinator uh, Faust DeLazer right there. He was a college uh, teammate of Coach Meckley and came to Florida about the same time. He's been at the school for a number of years, just like the head coach. There you see Phil Yancey with his troops. There's Coach DeLazer. He and Paul Meckley, graduates of Valparaiso. See if they put the big rush on. They do have two guys deep to receive, Warwick and Roundtree. Timmons, number 10, is on the right side as the near side, the bottom left corner of your screen as you look at it. Now, I haven't talked to you about this, but this is not a trick question, but where is Valparaiso? It's Indiana. Is it? Sounds like it's in Texas, you know? Well, it probably wants to be. <laughs> if you ask Texans, they'll tell you they want to be Texas. Yeah, yeah. Jumping around on the line southeast. Did some shifting to try to get Vanguard to false start, and it looks like they were successful. Of course, you do those college uh, call-in shows, the scoreboard false show. Start. I should have known that you knew that answer. Well, you, you should have known I could make up something on short notice. How's that? <laughs> Mark the ball back around the 17 now. Are they coming after it? No, it looks like they're going to try and return it. Well, I bet Timmons is coming after it. Well, they block him right away. Pretty good kick. A wobbler that'll hit around the 42-yard line. There's a clip. The ball's picked up by Roundtree running down the sideline. But Roundtree's return will not count because a Bradenton Southeast player clipped Doc Hodges right in the back at full speed at around the 43, and that'll move the ball back into Southeast Territory. We have clipping on the Orange team after the change of possession. First down. So now with about, they'll end up with about 58 yards to go to the end zone. Ends up being a 33-yard kick. 37 seconds, no timeouts remaining for the Seminoles of Bradenton Southeast High School. Boy, that was a big turn of events right there because they had terrific field position if that clip had not been made. Doc Hodges really got uh, hurt as he got hit in the back, number 70, and it hurt him physically, but it hurt the Southeast uh, offense uh, as well because they, they had a chance perhaps to throw the ball in the end zone, but... Uh, I don't know that they can get it even close now. Well, it looks like we're about to find out just how far Peter Warwick can throw. Vanguard had a bunch of guys up around the line of scrimmage. Warwick on the run, throws deep downfield, wide open. It's caught at the 15-yard line. Ted Bryant makes the catch with 28 seconds to go in the first half. Well, someone makes a big mistake in the secondary as Warwick rolls out of the pocket. Evidently, someone from the secondary started moving up for whatever reason. It just let a wide receiver run right by him. Yeah, that was Ted Bryant, number 23, <laughs> somehow found himself all alone in the secondary. That's a, a big mental mistake in the defensive backfield for the Knights right there. 41 seconds to go. Warwick, quick drop, throws the fade to the corner, batted away, just getting the left paw up there. Lee King knocked it away from Bryant when it looked like it might be six. Well, you don't play defensive back any better than Lee King plays right here. Looks back, plays the ball, knocks it away. I think he read the eyes of uh, number 23, Ted Bryant, right there. Larry, looked like he, he reacted just just the moment that the ball was coming, and I, I truly believe he, he was reading the, the expression off Ted Bryant's face. 14 seconds to go. Certainly within field goal range, although Boyd has missed two extra points and had a field goal block. No timeouts left for Southeast. Warwick in trouble, gets away from it. 
Still on his feet, looking to the end zone. He throws it up there. Tipped an incomplete flag on the play with five seconds to go in the half. Two Vanguard players ran into each other. Von Keith Spencer and Keith Brigham both seem to have pretty good coverage. One of them got their hands on the football. Oh, just a huge collision. Uh, guys running rapidly from different directions, looking in the air for the football instead of at each other. Just a huge collision in the end zone. Pass interference on the defense. Oh, mercy. An automatic first down, half the distance. I don't, I don't know that uh, I saw the interference at all. Things start to break down as Warwick is almost sacked by big number 78, Alfred Smith. Now, Warwick is going to get the ball away, and everybody is running helter-skelter in the end zone. Yeah, there was the push from the back right there. Uh, it was a push on McMillan from the back. I wasn't able to pick up the defender, but uh, good call. And now they'll try the field goal from the 15. It'll be a 25-yard field goal attempt for Danny Boyd. Now, with only five seconds to go, they'd rather take their shot at the... Uh, the three-pointer here. This is a big three, a 12-point game, and it's blocked once again. Vanguard cannot advance it, and the first half will end with the second blocked field goal, and again, it was Von Keith Spencer, the senior corner who has 10 interceptions, now has two blocked field goals, and maybe that'll give Vanguard a little confidence, a little emotional boost going to the locker room. Well, just a great effort there from the top of the screen. We see that there was no no block at all on uh, number 25, Spencer, Von Keith Spencer. He's uh, made some huge plays on the specialty teams tonight. Well, that he has, and boy, did that help Vanguard. They a couple of shots at the end zone for Bradenton Southeast, one deflected by Lee King. The second, they called interference, but the end result is the Vanguard night defense stiffens. They block the field goal. Still, it's a 12-point Bradenton Southeast lead as we head to halftime, and we'll be back with our halftime from the 5A FHSAA State Championship game after this timeout on Sports Channel. Well, we're closing in on the start of the second half. It's 12-0 for Bradenton Southeast, leading Ocala Vanguard at the half. Dante Culpepper, if there's a story to this game, that's it. Four for 11 for 48 yards. They can't get Presley going. Meanwhile, Peter Warwick has combined for 153 yards of total offense. And if Warwick has 100 more yards of total offense than Dante Culpepper, then Vanguard's in trouble, and the scoreboard bears that out, Jim. They are in trouble, but they've also uh, hung in there. You know, this is one of the most powerful high school football programs in the country, Braden and Southeast, and Vanguard's only given them two touchdowns. So uh, very much uh, doubt, really, as to the outcome of this game. Vanguard really has an excellent chance, although Southeast in the second quarter definitely, without question, had the momentum. And Southeast will get the football back to start the third quarter. So you would think a very important defensive series for Ocala Vanguard right up front here in the second half. McMillan and Roundtree deep to receive the kickoff as Tommy Woods tees it up. Haven't had to mention his name, the kickoff man and place kicker for Vanguard. With nothing to do for the first half of this ball game, but he'll kick off to start the second half. And it's a short pop fly. That'll be caught at the 35-yard line, running up the middle through traffic. His linebacker, now we'll check and see exactly who that is with the ball, Carl Hines. I think that ball was mishit. I don't think they intended to pop that ball up like that. I think he just gets his foot uh, way under the tee. Oh, he almost, yeah, he almost slipped. He really popped that one up. Looked like a chip shot in uh, golf. Instead of a drive, like you're supposed to boom it uh, typically on the kickoff. 40 yard line, great situation for Southeast. So the kicker under clubs. And here we go from the 40, right up the gut. McMillan's got five. He's tripped up. Shoney Washington, Keith Brigham on the stop. And you have a feeling they'll go to McMillan here early in the third, try to establish a little ball control. You know how dangerous the passing offense of Culpepper has been all season long for Vanguard. So if they're within two scores, they still feel like they're right there. 
Yeah, that's why this is a, a big uh, series of downs for both teams. If Southeast can maintain control, uh, they'll solidify their opportunity to, to win this thing. Pass right side, McMillan's got a first down into Vanguard territory, lost the ball, but it went out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Ten more for Darrell McMillan and a first down. Well, McMillan's having uh, problems holding on to that pigskin tonight. We talked about the the rainstorm uh, prior to kickoff, but uh, there's no rain on in the sky right now. That was just a big hit that almost knocked that ball away. So Braden and Southeast, the Seminoles with a first down inside the Vanguard 45. You see a single season rushing record for Bradenton Southeast, and he keeps adding to it. Passed it at 1,053. He's now over 1,700. And a little fake toss inside, handoff, nothing there. Closing in quickly as Inglehart to make the stop for no gain on Corey McDuffie. Well, this young junior's having a super night on defense. Chris Inglehart, number 55. Playing inside linebacker. He sees the uh, the guard pull, Josh Hunter, number 74, and simply jumps in right behind him and makes the tackle before the play develops. There we see Jermaine Roberts, a senior defensive end, back in the lineup for Vanguard. Suffered an injury early in the first half and did not play much in the opening half of the ball game. Warwick on the option, caught from behind and dropped. Nice pack play made along the line by the nose guard, Alfred Smith. We mentioned Smith early, Jim, but that's the first time he's been in on a solo tackle. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of hustling. We saw him swarming to the football with his teammates earlier, and that's pretty much what uh, the way that uh, the Knights played defense was a swarming gang tackling attack. That time, Alfred Smith uh, makes the hit and the stop by himself. And it brings about a third down. Very big third down for the Vanguard defense. Southeast with two wide receivers. They bring everyone up tight defensively. Warwick looks to throw deep. He does go deep. He's got a man. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Ryan Rock. 42 yards, and it's 18 nothing. Well, Matt Callaway, the free safety is in coverage on Ryan Rock, and Rock just gets a step or two on him. And that ball is perfectly thrown by Peter Warwick. The first touchdown via the air tonight, and it comes from the guy that doesn't throw it that often. Warwick, not Culpepper. Culpepper from Vanguard, obviously, with huge numbers throwing the football. Warwick not getting the chance to put the ball in the air that often because of the powerful running attack, but there's a touchdown pass right there. And for the first time in five kicks, Danny Boyd is good. He missed two extra points. He had two field goals blocked, but with that extra point, it's 19-0 after this connection from Peter Warwick to Ryan Rock. You'll see number 19, Matt Callaway, trying to catch up with Rock. Just Callaway just can't reach out and knock the ball away. He thought perhaps he, he might be able to knock the ball away and Runk celebrates with a touchdown uh, jog in the end zone. Jim, I mentioned right before the snap, Vanguard had brought everyone in tight. They play very tight. The corners were there. The safeties were back behind the linebackers, no more than five yards off the line of scrimmage. That made it a little tough, I guess, for Callaway to get back there. Well, you become very vulnerable in the secondary when you're concentrating on the other team's powerful running game, and, and that's exactly what happened. Johnny Presley, Kenny Clark deep to receive after we check out the drive. 60 yards, five plays, a third and seven, 42-yard touchdown pass, making it 19-0 in favor of the defending state champs. See the Bradenton Southeast sideline. I've not seen that before. Driving kickoff will go to the goal line. If the ball did not break the plane, so he can bring it out. And bringing it out is 
Kenny Clark. Clark on the return out to about the 22, 23 yard line. And Dante Culpepper's got to try to make something happen after just a 48 yard first half. Well, he was on target a couple of times early in the first quarter, if you'll recall, but the ball wasn't caught. And uh, now with his team trailing uh, even more uh, burden for his shoulders as he tries to bring his team back from a, a 19 point deficit. See the difference a little bit. Bradenton Southeast with a lot of guys back in cover. Underneath pass to Whitaker. Ivan Whitaker popped as he goes out of bounds at the 37 yard line, but a good pick up of 14 and a first down. Brett Timmons, number 10, with a big hit along the sideline. Timmons, senior. Timmons getting some interest from Division I recruiters along with Roundtree. Of course, we've talked so much about Reggie Davis and Warwick. Daryl McMillan will also get an outstanding opportunity to further his football career and his education. Inside handoff, finally a little bit of running room for Presley, but he was a little indecisive, and Chauncey Green said, if you're going to stop, I'm going to nail you. Oh, he saw Chauncey Green in as a fullback on the short yardage touchdown run in the second quarter. Obviously, he's the talented linebacker of this Southeast defense, but uh, at 238 pounds, uh, he's a load either offensively or defensively. Dante Culpepper is exactly at 6,000 yards for his career. You know when you're driving your car and you hit a certain number and you have all them zeros up there, you can't wait to look? Well, Culpepper got exactly 6,000 on his last pass. Culpepper, all kinds of running room. He's got five, he's got 10, he's got a first down. Up and around the 48-yard line, so Dante Culpepper running the right side, picks up 12 yards and a first down. What he also got was an open field block by Ivan Whitaker, Ivan Whitaker, excuse me, Ivan. Look at that block right there. Whitaker, the little wide receiver at 5'8", 160. He's getting downfield, thinks he's gonna maybe continue his route, but instead comes back and makes a huge hit on Carl Hines. Hines said, hey, where'd that guy come from? Back-to-back so -back first downs for Vanguard. That may be a first. No more than the second time they've been able to put successive first downs out there. They fake the inside handoff. Call Pepper will be sacked. Timmons on the blitz. Well, Richard Pardee, the offensive guard, is pulling out with the hope of blocking for his quarterback, uh, Culpepper. But Brett Timmons is so quick, he just sprints right by him before Pardee can make the block. Uh, Timmons, again, a, a perfect example of that great team speed that uh, Braden Southeast is so proud of on their defensive side of the line of scrimmage. Oh, second and long situation back at the 39-yard line. Southeast shows blitz. Here it comes. Culpepper gets rid of it. Presley never caught it, and it'll be third down. Yeah, here it comes is right. Jermaine Belvin, number 35, untouched at the line of scrimmage. Showed the blitz a bit early, but uh, no one was able to pick him up. Belvin right in the face of Culpepper imme uh, immediately. Look to the top of your, to the left of your screen. You're going to see 35 just uh, putting huge pressure on Dante Culpepper. Isn't that a great linebacker name, though? Belvin. If your name's Belvin, you should be a linebacker. 7-12 to go, third quarter. All Bradenton Southeast now is Van Team. Ocala Vanguard 14-0, Bradenton Southeast 13-1, but it's the Seminoles from Southeast with a 19-0 lead. Vanguard has third and 20, and they have converted just one time today on third down. Dante Culpepper gets some protection, hit as he throws, a nice catch is made at the 42-yard line of Southeast, and that's going to be very close, looks to be maybe a half yard short of first down yardage. 
Kenny Clark with an excellent catch. Kenny Clark, uh, the junior wide receiver, the, the wider of the twin receivers on the left side of the formation, does a nice job of separating himself from uh, Thomas Jefferson. Boy, did you say that prior to that play, they'd only converted one third down? Wow. Still just one because they're short by half a yard. And it'll be fourth down at the 42 of the Seminoles. Obviously, you need more production out of your offense, certainly as you trail by 19 points. Now they, they, they can't afford not to convert these third downs, but there was one where they, they have to give the ball back to uh, Braden and Southeast. They line up. They broke huddle with eight seconds left on the play clock. They lined up to punt on fourth and one. Delay of game on the white side. Down by 19 points. Now they take the delay of game. So it's fourth and almost six from the 47-yard line. Well, it'd be a huge gamble if they went for it. Uh, let's assume they weren't able to make it and Southeast were to go in and score. It would be over. The game would be over. So by putting the ball away, Coach uh, Philip Yancey thinks that maybe his defense can put the brakes on Southeast, get the ball back again, and have another shot with his offense. So too much risk involved uh, going for it at this point. And then they call a timeout. So they take a delay a game lose the five yards, call timeout, and sent their punt team back on the, no, they send their offense back on the football field, but now fourth down, and instead of about a half yard, it's five and a half yards. Well, the risk is greater now, isn't it? Are they gonna go for it? Yes, they are, wow. Let's see if the officials are gonna let them play. Sports Channel brings you the best in college basketball all season long. The Florida Gators, South Florida Bulls, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame in conference action from around the nation. Be sure to check your local listings for matchups and availability in your area. College basketball right here on Sports Channel. So on fourth and almost six. Vanguard looks like they'll go for it. The blitz comes from the right side. Quarterback draw. Culpepper inside the 45. He's got the first down at the 40-yard line. Well, your thought immediately is this is that this is not going to work. The pressure is coming. You don't think Culpepper is going to make anything happen right here. Look, the pocket collapses on him immediately. I think they tried to get him outside right there, but somehow he breaks a couple of tackles. And look at that lunge forward right there. And it looks like he got the first down. And a late flag thrown at the 42-yard line. Oh, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. Oh, my goodness. Wonder what they did. Oh. That'll be first and 25. Yeah, dead ball. Uh, boy, what a what a bad break for the, the Knights. Uh, Coach Phil Yancey's asking what, what happened. And... Uh, now the good news, they picked up the first down. The bad news is they're going backwards. I'd love to get an explanation on that one. Didn't see anything happen except the flag come out. Seemingly after the play was over. Yeah, I wish that officials would talk to us a little bit with their microphones. But the 86 yards in penalties for Ocala Vanguard. Keep in mind that 86 yards of offense in the first half. First and 25 from their own 45, and now an official timeout as Culpepper gets a chance to tie his shoes. Well, that was a huge risk they took uh, on fourth and six. Uh, I guess the rule here, as we see Culpepper go to the sideline, is that he, does he have to come out for a play? No, he's just going to get a shoestring. Well, maybe he's got a cut. They must have a cut that they saw, and they have to tape it up and bandage it. So they'll take care of that. And I think he, I'm sure Phil Yancey isn't talking about the cut. He's talking about that 15-yard penalty that certainly took away quite a bit of momentum from his football team. Now, the rule is, as I understand it, is if it was an equipment malfunction, if he had to leave the field because his helmet was the strap was broken or what have you and they stop the clock he has to stay out but for that the blood rule they just stop it patch it up and let him stay in that's different than in college where they do take him out 
So Culpepper stays in the game, first and 25. to go third quarter. The Vanguard Knights scoreless. Culpepper throws. He's got a man down the middle of the field. Kenny Clark to the 15, to the 10, and he's down at the six-yard line. Ocala Vanguard hits its biggest play of the game, 49 yards. Well, it's taken uh, almost two and a half quarters for this explosive passing game to execute like it's obviously done all season long. Kenny Clark right here on the slant route. The ball's right in the belly from Dante Culpepper. Reggie Davis in coverage. Number 11 finally making the touchdown saving tackle. But there's the Dante Culpepper uh, pass that uh, we've been looking for that we knew was in the, in the game plan. On first and goal, Culpepper fires. It's a tip ball. Touchdown! Rashad Jones went up and got it, and Vanguard's on the board. Well, these Knights deserved a little bit of good luck. They've been struggling throughout the first half to hang in there with this Southeast ball club, and then Southeast came out and got another score in the third quarter. But, uh, hey, now it's time for a little celebration, a little fun on the Vanguard Knight sideline. That ball could have been caught, obviously, by anyone as it bounced in the sky near the goal line, but Rashad Jones was the guy that came up with the catch. Vanguard apparently missing a player out there for the extra point. They've got 10 seconds. Now they ought to just take the delay a game and not burn a timeout. Take the delay a game, don't use up a timeout here, and kick an extra long extra point if you have to. There's the flag for delay. No big deal. Their kicker, certainly, Tommy Woods, if he can kick from 20. Play the game on the offense. He'll kick from 25. Well, Alfred Smith late coming in to block for the extra point. Understandable that extra point team hasn't had a chance to work today. Well, they're glad to be out there right now. They're crawling back into this thing. Placements down. Oh boy, did he kick that one. That's the same guy who hit the 15-yard kickoff. They hit a howitzer for an extra point as we watch the scoring play again. Oh, the ball bounces off of number uh, 41, Carl Hines. Anybody could have gotten it, but it was Rashad Jones making the catch. There's anybody's ball right now. Hey, it's basketball season, and look at that vertical. What do you call that? Elevating, right? He went up there and got it, and of course the Southeast players will be told in the future, hey, grab the guy, knock him over. It's not a it's not a pass interference situation. Southeast had him outnumbered big time, but Jones got the touchdown. Let's go down to the field for a report from Art Schifrin. Well, the story on that unsportsmanlike conduct was an illegal football. This here, the Baden 550, is the ball they're supposed to be using in the ball game. Somehow, another ball ended up on the field. The Vanguard coaching staff says, hey, we just played the ball that was out there. How can we be in control of that? The official apologized for it, but what is an illegal ball, and so that was the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Despite the penalty, they had a drive of 77 yards, nine plays. They actually gained 92 yards on that drive. Boy, those We're, officials were on top of it, right? How, how would they know that the label, <laughs> the label was different? I mean, who's paying attention to that type of thing? It's kind of interesting that it is the responsibility of Vanguard when there are other people involved with the football. They'll kick it deep. A wobbler that hits at the 20 is fielded back at the 12-yard line. And not much return opportunity there. Coming in on the return for Bradenton Southeast was, let's check out number 42 for the Seminoles. He's so small, I can't find him. Yante Hines. Yante Hines, a 5'3 junior. All 142 pounds of him. So here we go with Bradenton Southeast on the offense. Ball at the 25-yard line. And they're short a body. Oh, they're guard. They need a Josh and Hunter? Peter Warwick calls timeout with 10 seconds on the play clock. No, Josh Hunter's on the field. I don't know who's not uh, 
one of their running backs. No fullback. No fullback? No wide out. They had nine guys, so they're probably plenty of blame to go around. 19-7 our score with 5.09 to go here in the third quarter. It started on the Darrell McMillan two-yard run. Warwick's 33-yarder put it down at the 30. McMillan then had a 26-yarder to give them first and goal at the four. He scored two plays later. Bradenton Southeast then went up 12-0 when Roundtree intercepted Culpepper. Warwick a 39-yard scoring run. The extra point again, no good. It was 12-zip. Early in the third quarter, Warwick to the air, a 42-yard pass to Ryan Ronk. The extra point was good this time. 19-0, Bradenton Southeast in control, but Ocala Vanguard comes back. A 50-yard pass from Culpepper to Clark. Got the ball down to the six-yard line or the five-yard line officially, and then he hit Jones on that tipped pass for the score. So it's a 12-point game, just as it was at halftime. Still a long way to go here in this Florida Class 5A state title matchup. The defense tries to dig in and make something happen for Vanguard. Southeast will try to get that running game cranked up again. On the little counter, McMillan is dropped. In there quickly, Larry Tucker to make the tackle at the 22-yard line. That'll be a loss of about three or four yards. Larry, you could hear the Vanguard, Vanguard fans as they gave the defense a, a standing ovation and screaming defense. So important now for the Knights to shut down these Seminoles if, if they can possibly come back and win this thing. They've got to put the brakes on this powerful running game. Three wide receivers, Baxson and I, no tight end. On second down and long from the 22-yard line. Warwick on the option, that's a loose ball at the 10. That ball is still loose. Vanguard, touchdown! The Vanguard Knights stayed patient the whole way, and they've got another touchdown. Well, I think it was Justin Moore, number 72, that knocked the ball away. Justin Moore, number 72, I think knocks the ball away. Yeah, he does there. He makes the big hit on Warwick. And as you mentioned, Larry, the patience of the defenders. Is that 81, Javon Jenkins? That's who it is, Jenkins. Patiently waited to get the right handle on that ball and lunge into the end zone. And my goodness, has the complexion of this championship battle changed. It has changed dramatically. And with an extra point here, Vanguard will be within five. Back-to-back -back scoring plays. The touchdown pass on the tipped ball, and then the fumbled pitch caused by Moore, recovered by Jenkins. The extra point kick is up, and it is good. So Woods connects for the second time, and we've got a five-point ball game between Ocala Vanguard's Knights and the Seminoles from Bradenton Southeast. You see Justin Moore getting congratulations as he takes a break on the bench, but watch to the right of your screen. He, he's responsible for the quarterback. Oh, the ball seemed to slip out of Warwick's grasp as he tried to make the one-hand pitch. You know, he has the big hand, tried to make the one-hand pitch. Gave up the football, and Vanguard gets the touchdown. There you see big Justin Moore. Well, Vanguard with a couple of big rangy defensive ends. Moore 6'6", six, six, two and a quarter. Roberts 6'7", 233. Roberts has not been a factor after suffering an early injury, but Moore has played very well. And now the folks on the far side of the field who might have thought things were very bleak when they had first and 25 down by 19. But they have come back, back-to-back -back touchdowns. Vanguard is within five. Speaking of five, number five, Alfonso Roundtree. Deep to receive along with Ted Bryant. And as you mentioned earlier, a huge crowd following uh, Vanguard from Ocala here to Daytona Beach to cheer their team on. And they're all on their feet right now and excited about this turn of events. Conversely, the Seminoles really have to regain their poise and, and uh, just try and get that offense uh, cranked up without doing anything uh, too dangerous and certainly without giving the football back again to Vanguard via the turnover. Woods kicks it off deep. Backing up to field it. That's Bryant at the 5, 10, up to the 25, and tripped up at about the 26 or 27-yard line. 
Kenny Smith in on the coverage along with Shoney Washington. And there's Justin Moore. It's forced five fumbles. That's tops on the Vanguard defense. And on over 100 tackles this season. And now Paul Meckley's team will draw on that championship and playoff experience, which you can really need in this situation. Four minutes to play. And we've got a timeout called by the officials again. Let's see if we have an equipment problem or what's going on over there on the Vanguard puddle. Apparently, Zach Ballard's got problems with his helmet. He's okay, and we're set to continue. 4.07 officially on the clock, third quarter. The 5A state championship on the line. Now, it stopped raining, so the elements are not a problem on the field right now for this offense. Bellin tripped up and dropped for no gain. Alfred Smith, the nose guard. Well, the elements aren't a problem for this offense, but these talented night defenders continue to be a thorn in their side. We talked about the struggles that this Seminole offense had in the first quarter. They got the running game on track to, in the second quarter, and McMillan's put up big numbers. He's over 100 yards rushing tonight, but uh, hey, uh, this defense continues to fight uh, for Vanguard. Second down. They run up the middle, nothing there. That play was stuffed. Zach Ballard. Oh, and he has a right to celebrate there, Larry. Uh, you saw it this, as I did. He shot that gap immediately at 5'11", 187. The senior might be playing the last football game of his lifetime in terms of full contact football. A lot of these seniors might not ever Get a chance to do this again, and Zach Ballard makes a great hit right there. There he is, just <laughs> says hello. Then his linebacker sidekick, Shoney Washington, finished it off. Bradenton Southeast, like Vanguard, struggling on third down. Warwick steps up, he's hit, still on his feet. Peter Warwick will go down at the 17-yard line. Alfred Smith again along with Chris Englehart. Yes, but initially it was Javon Jenkins, 81, Larry, from the right side of the defensive alignment. If you look to the top of your screen, I think you'll see number 81, first of all. Yeah, there he is, and he slips down. I thought he missed the, the chance to make the great sack, and there's Englehart fighting at the ankles of Warwick, and finally, who is it, 78, Alfred Smith, that finishes him off. I tell you, everyone on that defensive line got in on the play eventually. Von Keith Spencer deep to receive the punt. The Seminoles have not had to punt in quite a while. Low line drive kick hits at the 48, picked up by Von Keith Spencer at the 40. He's into Southeast Territory and then runs out of bounds at the 47 yard line. So Ocala Vanguard, which trailed by 19, is now within five, and they've got the ball in Seminole territory. Now, they're in great shape, aren't they? Inside of Seminole territory, having scored the last two touchdowns. You're talking about the, the big Mo. It's over there wearing the blue and white right now. 13-yard punt return, putting that ball in Bradenton Southeast territory. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far side at the top of the screen. Culpepper steps up. Culpepper hit by Reggie Davis, dropped by Davis after a three-yard gain. That play might have gone for 15 if not for the fine tackle. I'm sorry, Carl Hines, the middle linebacker, not Davis, 11. It was 41 on the play. Yeah, it looked like 11 to me, too, but it was uh, Carl Hines, 41, doing a, a beautiful job right there. A lot of pressure on those inside linebackers as they try and contain the Culpepper when he gets out of that pocket. Clock running less than a minute to go here in the third quarter. That fourth quarter is going to be something in this ball game. Inside handoff, Presley tripped up accidentally perhaps but ends up gaining virtually nothing. Reggie Williams was in there along with Quentin Allen. But it yeah, might I think have been. They a... Tried to trap Quentin Allen, number 99. Watch. 
Yeah, there's uh, the attempted uh, trap by, I think that was Alfred Smith again. Alfred Smith playing right tackle, wasn't sure. That was uh, 78, I think. There you see the clock winding down in this third quarter of the Class 5A state championship game. A big third down for Vanguard. Dante Culpepper sets up and fires high, incomplete. Going up with just one arm, Kenny Clark, and as hard as Culpepper throws that ball, you need two hands and maybe a catcher's mitt, not just one. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson really delivering a big blow in the secondary. Jefferson number six. Boy, that's, a, that's what you call a fastball right there, Larry. That's, that was a high hardwood, wasn't it? <laughs> Kenny Clark, the intended receiver, only could get the one finger on it. He better check that it's not broken. That ball was hung. Fourth down, six seconds to go in the quarter. Warwick and Roundtree deep to receive the punt of Greg Smith. A little bit of pressure. Smith gets rid of it. Nice high kick. He fielded back at the nine-yard line. Heading this way with running room. That's Warwick, and Warwick steps out of bounds. And they'll mark him pretty close to the 28-yard line. 19 yards on the return after a 35-yard punt, and that is the way the third quarter of the Florida High School Activities Association 5A championship game comes to a close. We still have 12 minutes of football when we return five-point lead for Bradenton Southeast. Coaching staff of the Seminoles of Bradenton Southeast. Congratulating his defense on that last series of downs and reminding them that there's a lot of football to be played in this state title game. Nineteen fourteen, our score. Southeast led it at one point. Nineteen zip. Now this is truly exciting as we go into this fourth quarter because this thing's very much up for grabs right now. As Coach Philip Yancey is hoping that his defense perhaps can stop Southeast at this point in time, but that's a tall order with this powerful running game. Here we go, and there's false start in the middle of the offensive line. And instead of first and 10 at the 28, it'll be first and 15. False start on the offense. That was the offensive guard, Josh Hunter, number 74. He's really played a terrific game uh, for Southeast tonight, but that time uh, a bit quick before the, before the ball was uh, supposed to be snapped. We've pointed out at halftime how much trouble Vanguard was having offensively. A little turnaround in the third quarter. Some good fortune, too. Uh, and you need that uh, to win championship battles. You have to have everything going for you, including luck. Option left side. Warwick is going to keep it because he has no one to pitch to, and he'll be run out of bounds after about a five-yard gain. On Keith Spencer, we've called his name a lot, the cornerback. Yeah, he's, he's certainly been in on a lot of hits uh, all over the field, Spencer. Look at Warwick kind of shaking his head as he looks to the sideline. I think this offense is uh, a bit concerned right now with their ability to uh, not move the ball with the consistency that they're used to. Ended up marking him closer to the 27-yard line. Let's see, now they're a little confusion over the spot, so they do respot it at the 28. That's where it should have been. Braden and Southeast had lost about two feet on the movement of the ball, so they straightened it out. The Vanguard fans cheering on their defense, trying to get that ball back in the hands of Dante Culpepper. On second down, here's McMillan trying to get to the outside. Jenkins says, no way. Javon Jenkins with a big tackle. Now, Javon Jenkins, uh, the young man that just a moment ago was able to grab that fumble. This time, look at him get up field here. He just fights off the block and then gets up the field to make the hit for the loss. Jenkins, 6'3", 232. He'll get bigger. 
Talked about him as a tight end, maybe defensive end is a spot to look at for that youngster. Third down, they marked it at the 28, so they need right at 10 yards. Very favorable mark that time for the Seminoles. One on the play clock, they did not get it off. Delay of game will be called. Dead ball foul, delay of the game on the offense. So now a third and 15 for Paul Meckley's team. Third down has been a bad down all day long for both of these offenses. For Southeast, how about one out of eight? Wow, those are extraordinary numbers, aren't they? Uh, traditionally, the team that has a lot of success on third down conversions, keeps the football, piles up the big numbers, wins the game, but both both these teams struggling on third down tonight. They better hurry up. Two seconds on the play clock. They just do beat the wrap there. The pitch is taken by McMillan, but he's run out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Not quite out of bounds. He's tackled before he goes out. And Bradenton Southeast will have to punt it back to Culpepper in the Vanguard offense. Well, once again, you have to pay tribute to David Hodges and his defensive crew that uh, has prepared this Vanguard team to stop this option attack Larry you can see that there's a defender in the quarterback's face and in the pitch man's face almost every time on Keith Spencer again deep at around the 20 Danny Boyd looking for the punt of his young life he's kicked it pretty well his first two tries but he needs a good one here 10 10 to go in the 5a state championship game there's a driving kick backing up to the 30. Spencer fields it there. Surrounded by Seminoles, he'll be dragged down. Great open field tackle by Reggie Davis. Excellent kick coverage. That's a minus one yard return after a 43 yard punt. So Boyd did deliver the punt of his young career. Yeah, super job by both Boyd and Davis. Boyd with the excellent punt and Davis with the excellent coverage. Vanguard does have the football, but uh, they got nothing out of that punt return at all. Spencer shaken up a little bit, has to be helped off the field. Obviously he hurt his right ankle or knee. He's limping on that leg as he heads off the field. But Dante Culpepper struggled mightily in the first half, but has had some big throws in the second half. Takes his Vanguard offense to the line of scrimmage, the 29. Inside handoff, Presley. Presley's got 10, 15, 20. Up the middle, uh, marked at 18 yards, but a big pick up, the best running play of the day for senior tailback Johnny Presley. And yeah, now Presley has over 1,600 yards throughout the season and the three playoff games, and this is really the first time he's broken loose tonight. Johnny Presley on the draw out of the shotgun. We saw their attempts to run this play throughout the night fail, but they've not given up on it. They come back to it and get the ball near midfield and pick up a first down. Officially give him 19 yards on the play. Paul Pepper throws the quick hitch left side. Both the receiver and the defensive back slipped a little. And Paul Pepper might have as well as it falls incomplete. Rashad Jones, the intended receiver. Thought Reggie Williams might have gotten a little piece of that football too, Larry. Reggie Williams at 6'2", 232. The up Standing defensive end number 90 for Southeast had his had his hands up in Culpepper's uh, line of uh, flight with that ball right there. Culpepper rolling right, fires, it's caught. That's Ivan Whitaker who came into this game with just seven catches and that's his third today. Big hit by Carl Hines, inside linebacker, hustling over to make the uh, tackle on uh, the senior, Whitaker, who's, who's really been the most dependable of the wide receiver court tonight. And he's not the guy that's put up the big numbers for him all year long. That's been Kenny Clark and Rashad Jones. But Whitaker, the senior, playing a, a terrific game tonight at wideout. The ball's at the 35-yard line, nine minutes. Five seconds to go in the game. In 
inside handoff. Presley collared at the 35, spins forward down to the 32-yard line. So Presley on effort got three yards out of nothing. Quentin Allen makes the tackle for Southeast. He's a senior defensive end. Yeah, Quentin Allen, watch uh, Allen react uh, to the block as he comes up field, sees the, sees the draw, sees the trap attempt by Justin Moore. Bites off the block. Quentin Allen did a super job right there. On second down, Culpepper. In trouble, gets away from it. Culpepper to the 30. Culpepper down to the 21 yard line and a first down. Well, Larry, I live in the Orlando area, and on Friday night, they showed the highlights of the regional football games, and every Friday night, I could count on seeing Culpepper on those highlight reels, and here's, here he is again, getting out of the pocket. We talked about his size and strength at 6'4", they say 220-plus. Hard to bring down in the open field, and a uh, lot of speed and agility, too. Just outside the 20 yard line. Vanguard down by five with eight minutes, eight seconds to go. And that's nothing doing right into Reggie Williams, Willie Sams, and backwards goes Johnny Presley. Now so impressive that uh, down group of linemen for the Seminoles. There we see again the, the intent to Spring Presley loose on the on the draw out of the shotgun, but that big front four uh, just uh, excellent job shutting that thing down completely. Paul Pepper again flushed from the pocket, throws incomplete, short hopped his intended receiver. Javon Jenkins might have short hopped him on purpose because there was a defender in the line. So with that incompletion, it's third down for Vanguard. And in this situation, you would assume you're in four down territory, although a field goal would make it a two point ball game. Well, I was thinking exactly the same thing. I, I got to believe they're in two down territory. Paul Pepper, 152. That's way below his average. Senior quarterback sets up, gets away from the pass rush, still on his feet, and is forced out of bounds. Excellent coverage downfield, and it'll be fourth down from the 18-yard line. Terrence Houston ended up running him out of bounds. Houston, the defensive tackle, dropped off in coverage. And with a fourth and eight situation, it looks like the field goal unit may well come on here. Well, we've seen the, the power on the extra point kicks that uh, Tommy Woods has. So uh, I guess uh, there's a lot of confidence in, in this young man as he attempts the field goal. The leg strength should not be an issue. It'll be a 36 yarder. The kick is up. And the kick is good. He slipped on the kick. He didn't get as much real estate as he wanted, but he got as much as he needed. Tommy Wood with the field goal, and the 5A state championship is now a two-point ball game. Well, according to our regular season stats, uh, Wood has four touchdowns, and even though he slipped right there, he got all to the ball and hit it squarely. And you commented on his extra point kicks, how, how strong and straight and true he was. And uh, we can see why... Uh, Coach Philip Yancey didn't hesitate to put him out there in this situation and let him go for the three. Well, both sides feel like a state title's within grasp. Seven minutes, 15 seconds to go in the fourth quarter, a two-point ball game. Bryant and Roundtree will be deep to receive for Southeast, but Vanguard has scored 17 unanswered points. Unexpectedly, too. I don't think that uh, either one of us thought that they might be able to get back into this thing as rapidly as they did in the third quarter. And now here in the fourth, they've closed to within two. 
There you see the Vanguard drive, 52 yards for the field goal. Long kickoff taken by Roundtree at the eight-yard line. Roundtree looking for some running room, breaks it to the outside. He's got the 25, he's collared there, still on his feet. Roundtree trying to come back across the field. The end zone's the other way. <laughs> Laterals the ball. Here's Daryl McMillan. Daryl McMillan to the 40, to midfield. Down the left sideline, flag on the play at midfield. McMillan goes out of bounds at the 24, but they'll bring it back to midfield and mark a penalty. There's also a flag back at the 40-yard line. Ho, 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 ho. Even the officials are grinning about that one. Where's the California band when you need it? <laughs> Well, we're waiting for the call right now. It looked like your greatest uh, flag ball fla fantasy on a Sunday afternoon Multiple right there. Multiple fouls. Multiple, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no on kidding. The turn team, <laughs> block below the waist, that way, clipping, that way. They're going to go right here. Well, it'll... it all starts uh, with Alfonso Roundtree getting shut down along the sideline there. Now... He's still breaking tackles. He's trying to get loose. No whistle. Makes the pitch back to McMillan. Now, McMillan's going to get a couple of nice blocks. I don't know that I see the clip, Larry. Maybe right there. Now, I don't know. They called a block below the waist around midfield, which I didn't see in a clip on the far side around the 40-yard line, not even near the play. So the ball ends up at the 35-yard line. The officials call timeout so they can figure out exactly what's what. We have six minutes and 49 seconds left in the Florida Class 5A state championship game and a 1917 showdown between Bradenton Southeast and Ocala Vanguard. New sport, local sports, national scores. New sport programming coupled with Sports Channel Florida's in-state sports coverage gives you, the viewer, the most comprehensive, entertaining, and timely sports news and event programming on a 24-hour basis. New sport has all the fast-breaking stories, scores, and highlights, and it's all exclusively right here on Sports Channel. Well, what entertainment these two uh, teams are giving us here tonight. Uh, just a great championship battle. Vanguard out of Ocala, Southeast out of Bradenton. This thing's going to go down to the wire. Vanguard coming in undefeated. Southeast, as we mentioned, was the number one rated high school football program in the country when the 94 season kicked off, and they've only lost one game, and that was a heartbreaker to Sarasota Riverview. Of course, they play in an area where they play people like Bradenton Manatee and Riverview and Booker and Sarasota High. It's just tremendous football. We talked about it earlier in that area of the state. So Braden and Southeast, 6.49 on the clock. They want that thing moving. Daryl McMillan up the gut, nothing there. Quickly in to stuff the play again is Chris Englehart. Let's get an update from Art Schifrin. Well, there you see Larry Tucker. He is back out on the field. He hurt his ankle about five weeks ago when someone fell on it. That's the left ankle. He re-injured it this evening just on the last defensive uh, drive for Vanguard. They re-taped it. He's back out there. In fact, he was back out on the field goal play, and he's back out there now. He said he will not miss the rest of this ball game. Gutting it out. Well, he's a senior. You can understand his uh, his interest in this thing. Second down. Up the middle, that's the fullback. McDonald flag comes in a little bit late as the play appeared to be stuffed for just a one or two yard gain. And the Vanguard players say it's against Southeast Seminoles. Now, do you want third and seven? You want to move them back and let them run a little more clock on you. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, since they don't throw the ball that much, I would probably do this, you know. Take the real estate. Right. Ball at the 25-yard line. I tell you, games like this are what makes it fun, Jim. Two teams look like Braden and Southeast had it in command the second half. Since that first Southeast score has been all Vanguard. And now the Seminoles need to pick up 20 yards in the next two plays or Vanguard gets the ball back. 
McMillan, he's going to throw it. If he can, he can't. He's dropped at the 15-yard line. Warwick snuck out, but sneaking in were Zach Ballard and Javon Jenkins. Yeah, exactly so. This was going to be a throwback pass from McMillan to Warwick if they could have executed it. But, Larry, I think it was Javon Jenkins again, 81, who's just been so outstanding as a tight end and a defensive end. There you see McMillan, first half, 110 yards, second half, good gracious, uh, nine carries for 12 yards. Woo! What a change. He lost 10 on that play. It is third and 30. One for nine on third down are the Bradenton Southeast Seminoles. Peter Warwick will throw it deep down the middle. He's got a man. It's caught, and it's a first down. Ted Bryant makes the catch at the 48-yard line, a 33-yard gain. Well, there was no safety in center field. There was no one there except the man-for-man -man coverage. Keith Brigham, number two, in coverage on Ted Bryant. There's no one to help Brigham to the bottom of your screen. You see, uh, I think uh, the safety number, or actually Shoney Washington, the linebacker, was up in man coverage himself. There was nobody in center field. And, oh boy, they haven't converted many third downs, but that was the biggest one of the night, wasn't it? They convert third and 30 with a 33-yard pass. Unbelievable. McMillan in the middle, still twisting, turning, got about three yards. Well, that uh, four wide receiver sets really put uh, a pinch on the secondary uh, vanguard. They're not used to seeing Southeast line up in a twin set receiver formation on each side. They're used to stopping the running game. Here they come out again now, Larry. They got uh, twin receivers on each side of the field. This, this is something that uh, Vanguard has not really seen tonight, except on this last series. Four guys out in man coverage, seven others in in the block. They fake McMillan, Warwick fumbled the ball. Oh! Vanguard's got it. Vanguard ball at the Southeast 46 yard line. Larry Tucker, we think number 77. Yes, he's celebrating. Who does that in the NFL, that little golf swing? Uh, is it? Uh, I don't know. Kevin Carter does it for, with the Florida Gators. Yeah, I know that. Oh, it's the big defensive end, uh, Ben, uh, for Buffalo. Oh, Bruce Davis. Bruce Davis. Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith. <laughs> Fred <knew> Jones. We, <laughs> we did it yeah, he was mimicking Bruce Smith and a huge play there. So now the ball at the 45-yard line. Three and a half minutes to play in the 5A championship game. They run the inside handoff. Presley hit and then dropped. Hines got there first, and then Terrence Houston helped finish him off, yeah. along with Timmons. Certainly Carl Hines, 41, right, uh, Johnny, on the spot there. Whoa, do you think there's pressure on this uh, Southeast defense right now with 310 left in the game, the team that's trailing you by only two points and has a great uh, field goal t uh, kicker in your territory? Woo. One first down, and it would get very interesting. Inside, three minutes to play. Culpepper, call signals. The blitz is coming, they pick it up. Culpepper's man is tripped up, no flag, and they call it incomplete. One receive, official says it's caught at the 25, a second says incomplete. Yeah, that ball was not caught. Just super defense by Alfonso Roundtree on Kenny Clark. Number five on number five. Kenny Clark was saying, hey, I was interfered with, but Alfonso Roundtree was celebrating, saying, no way. Oh, I don't know, though. His right arm, did you see his right arm there a little early? Yeah, the, the ball's definitely not caught, but uh, was there interference or not? I guess uh, a good no call there. I'll tell you, Vanguard's been called for interference three times, so I, I suspect they feel like it should have been. But again, they're just going for the ball. Under pressure, Culpepper fights off one, can't fight off the other two tackles. It'll be fourth down and 20. Timmons, Williams in there on the play, along with Quentin Allen. 
Yeah, it was Reggie Williams that came from the top of your screen. Look to the right of your screen. You're going to see big number nine. He put the heat on Culpepper. There he is. Whoa. Almost gets a sack. But, hey, did we tell you Culpepper was strong? He just runs right away from big Reggie Williams, but uh, can't escape the rest of the swarming Seminole defense. Jim, the official on the far side was trying to call timeout. I wonder if they will reset the clock. Ocala Vanguard called timeout with 2.22 left on the clock. And for 12 seconds, an official on the far side is waving his arms, and the clock operator never saw him. 2.10. Well, they're not discussing it, uh, I don't think. Yeah, uh, he came in. He's they? talking to the referee right now. Are they? So I don't know if they're discussing time or who's driving back to the hotel, but they're discussing something. And I believe he will ask for a reset on the clock. Yeah, the referee's trying to get the officials uh, in the press box's attention now as we look at uh, the Southeast students. There's Ocala on the other side of the field. They're all crossing their fingers. Fourth and 20. It's, it's basically a throw at 20 yards. They've got to throw that deep slant, which was very effective for them on a long down and distance, leading to their first touchdown. Well, Southeast has got twin safeties, and they're pressing man-for-man -man coverage on the wide receivers as well. they got two safeties to help out deep, and their cornerbacks are up in the face of the wide receivers. They have to get all the way to the 35-yard line. If they get inside the 35, then they're within a 52-yard field goal and start working from there if they don't. Vanguard will have just one timeout remaining, and it shouldn't be too hard for Bradenton Southeast to run out the clock. So this is the key play to keep Vanguard with a realistic shot in this ball game. The referee talking to the press box to get the clock either reset or tell them how long he wants it held. It should be anywhere. I saw the first timeout signal and looked at the clock, and it looked like 2.22. So let's see what they'll do. It is 15 seconds, we have been told. So it was 225. It was a, a lot of time that ran off the clock. So thanks to the work in the truck, everybody getting that information for us. And you'll recall now that uh, the Knights had the ball in Seminole territory. They had everything going their way, but, but then the incomplete pass and the sack, the big sack that forced them now back into their own territory almost on top of their own 45-yard line and looking at a, a fourth and 20. That's something nobody ever wants to look at. Looks like they'll go with a three-man rush, perhaps. Oh, then the delayed blitz as Hines comes charging in. Paul Pepper on the run. He takes off. He's got five. He's got ten. Still on his feet. Fifteen. Paul oh! Pepper runs over a man. Oh! The spot will be so close. I don't know if he stepped out of bounds, but you know what happened. Everybody took off covering the wide receivers. Everybody's with their back to Culpepper. Everybody in the secondary, that is, and a few linebackers thrown in. Once he gets outside, then they start to react. He gives a little dip to the inside, breaks to the sideline, and just runs over the strong safety, Joe Vegas. They've got to reset the chains exactly where the mark was at the 40 to see if they got it. It's inches either way. And he, oh, they haven't decided yet. The official. The First down. 2.13 on the clock. It's a first down. What an amazing play by Dante Culpepper. Well, he does his best Charlie Ward impression right here. Who would think you could scramble for 20 yards on fourth down? Look at the heat from Williams from the backside. Now watch this along the sideline. Oh, there he delivers the blow to Vegas and just gets the first down within inches. So now you've got to wonder how close do they need to get for Tommy Woods. Vanguard with one timeout, Southeast with two. Clock stopped at 2.13. And now a time is called. The official on the near side calls a timeout charge to Bradenton Southeast. Oh, boy. We better sit back and relax, catch our breath. We'll take a short timeout. 
the Florida 5A championship game going down to the wire. Vanguard down by two, deep in Southeast Territory. That's my dad, and that's mom. Dad's got an idea, a way to get rid of all the grody garbage that's polluting the world. He's invented a big rocket ship to shoot all the garbage into outer space. Mom's not sure, but Dad says his invention will save the world. There's an easier way to save the world. Recycle for your free recycling action guide right Recycle. Environmental Defense Fund, 257 Park Avenue South, New York, New York. More than half of America's most important military decisions are made here. No, it's not the Pentagon. Or NORAD. Or the headquarters of Air Combat Command. It's the place that employs over 50% of our armed forces. It's where you work. See you in a couple weeks. So when your employees in the National Guard and Reserve need time off to serve, give them the freedom to protect ours. Time to send for the federal government's free consumer information catalog from sunny Pueblo, Colorado. Billy has his, and boy, is he proud. Yes, you'll become smarter with information found in your free catalog. It lists free and low-cost publications on topics like saving money, getting federal benefits, staying fit, eating right, even educating your children. For your new catalog, send your name and address to Free Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Makes a great gift. You're watching Sports Channel, home of your home team. The 7 12 goals from Bradenton Southeast High School, state champs a year ago. They won it by three, 20 to 17 over Bay High School. Now they're up by two, 19 17. And Presley is going to be ridden down at about. Let's see where they spot. It should be around the 38. They're saying out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Chauncey Green, number 45, the inside linebacker, showing his speed right there, Larry. As he gets outside, this is the first time we've seen him try to make the pitch to Johnny Presley, trying to get outside, Vanguard is. But uh, no, sir, says Chauncey Green and his defensive teammates, uh, Carl Hines, number 41. Reggie Davis, number 11. And Peter Warwick, number nine, at safety. An extra defensive back for Southeast on second down and 16. As they marked him out at the 41, he was hit at the 38. Culpepper steps up, gets his balance. Culpepper's got the six back, and he's going to be caught from behind and dropped at the 30-yard line by Quentin Allen with a minute 54 to go and the clock running. Uh, Dante Culpepper trying to get downfield that's what he wants to almost slips if the knee goes down the plays over regains his his balance and is finally knocked down by a hustling number 99 quentin allen the defensive end who was initially rushing him on the pass of an injured player on the field for bradenton southeast it's chauncey green the inside linebacker Green will come out for a play. And we've got a third and five from the 30. From here, it's a 47-yard field goal if they don't get any yardage. 143 clock running. Ocala Vanguard trying to upset the defending state champs. Inside handoff on the delay. Here's Presley to the 25 and down to the 24. And That's first enough down. for a first down. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. And now you're at about a 41-yard field goal. They stop the clock with 125. Well, the Southeast defense, Larry, keeps coming up with a big play. They keep throwing for a loss, and then they get an answer from Vanguard. Vanguard comes up with a big play. The officials signal timeout. Southeast has called its final timeout. With the ball on the 24, it's going to come down to the next couple three plays and perhaps a field goal opportunity for Ocala Vanguard. Well, you wonder how Coach Philip Yancey will play this, Larry. Will he be more aggressive and try and 
go down and get the, the touchdown, or perhaps will he just try and get the proper alignment so that they can have the shot at the field goal? Bill Yancey looks on. Meanwhile, on the other sideline, Paul Meckley. He wants his defense to get their hands on Culpepper just one more time, if at all possible. Exciting high school football championship action right here on Sports Channel. Be sure to tune in for continued coverage of all the Florida high school state championships in classes 2A through 6A. Five state titles being contested and all televised right here on Sports Channel, the home of the Florida High School Activities Association championships. That's University of Florida assistant coach John Reeves with his son David, who is a high school quarterback in Gainesville, just a sophomore. Here we go from the 24-yard line. Another inside handoff, caught from behind, dropped, no gain. Chris Peterson, I think, got in there, no. Check that, it was Cedric Bell. So Cedric Bell's playing both ways, as is Warwick in these closing moments as we near the one minute mark to go in the game. They've got it squared up in the middle of the field. You know they'd like to get it a little closer. It's 41 or 42 yards from that spot. Southeast is out of timeouts. Vanguard has one. Culpepper fires over the middle. The oh. ball is in and out of the hands. What's the rule? It's caught. They say it's caught at the seven yard line. First down. And now the field goal would be a chip shot. Well, Rashad Jones makes the catch, or does he? The ground cannot cause the fumble. Does he have possession of the football? Yes, and the ground causes the fumble. It's a perfect call. That's exactly the call. And now Tommy Wood is grinning. His field goal numbers are good, but he just as soon not have to kick one. They go up the middle, 24 seconds, clock running. Reggie Williams continues to make huge plays all night long. There's another one right there. 14, 13. They're going to use a timeout. Tommy Woods from just off the left side will get a chance to be the hero. The Vanguard sideline and the fans on the far side of the stadium is excited and yet nervous as they can possibly be. A state championship rides in the hands of the snapper, the hands of the holder, and the leg of the kicker, Tommy Woods. Now, you'll recall that uh, there was a penalty on an extra point earlier, and his kick was actually longer than this one, wasn't it? So this is... Uh, He's kicked one longer than this tonight, as well as the, the long field goal he kicked. But they're not right in the middle of the field. That ball is uh, very near the uh, left hash. They're, they don't have the perfect location that they would wish to have. But most righty sidewinders would rather be a little bit off to the left as they line it up than a little off to the right. So here we go. Woods checks in. Timmons has come close on a couple of punts. You know Southeast will come off the ball just as quickly as they can. Matt Callaway is the holder, number 19. It's a 24-yarder for the state 5A championship for Tommy Woods. It's up. No good. For the second year in a row, the Seminoles of Bradenton Southeast High School have won the state championship, and your heart bleeds for young Tommy Woods. And Coach Philip Yancey, you know his kids fought their heart out for within a field goal of winning this championship battle, but it wasn't meant to be as the ball was a bit wide to the right. 
I thought when the ball left the ground, Larry, it was going to be good from our angle, but uh, evidently it was just a little bit and a little bit wide right. Yeah, you look for that draw. You start it right, look for just a little draw. You normally get it. It was not a bad kick. He didn't do a horrible job of making contact. He kicked the ball solidly. It couldn't have been wide by very much because we looked on target. It was not a long kick, but you could see it was drifting. Callaway and seemed to do a nice job of getting the ball down okay. Uh, it obviously missed by just inches. You know, it reminds me of, Jim, remember we did the game in Gainesville in, what's it, 91? Orlando Evans and Miami Southridge, and Miami Southridge missed the extra point. It was a tie. They were co-champions, and your heart went out to that young man on that kick, and it has to go out if you have any compassion, no matter how big of a Bradenton Southeast fan you are, You've got to feel badly for Tommy Woods. And while there's a disconsolate feeling on that side of the field, there's elation on the near side as Bradenton Southeast has a second straight state championship in another incredible game, 20 to 17 last year, 19 to 17 this time around. Paul Meckley with a consecutive championship going back to Bradenton. A tremendous year. Let's go down to the field and hear from the coach and Art Schiffer. Well, Coach, you got the 19 to nothing lead, then a tremendous comeback by Vanguard. Tell me what you were feeling like as you were hanging in there to pull this one out. Well, you just hoped there at the end that if they got in field goal position that, you know, maybe it wouldn't work. You know, we had them strung out back there fourth and long, and Dante makes a great play. They do the drive, everything right. You know, very much like we did at the end of the first half, we got a great drive that can maybe give us, the, you know, another touchdown or some points at the end, and we didn't get anything either. It just so happened that, their misfortune took place at the end of the football game. We were able to squeeze another score in between because we didn't run out of time at the end like they did. Did they do anything differently that allowed them to come back like they did there in the second half? No, I don't think so. I think they just kept trying the same things and working. They played a little bit, maybe better defense. Um, we, didn't, we didn't get very exciting offensively in the second half. We saw some things open, and I tell you what, when we scored the first time we had the ball in the second half, I think that took a little adrenaline out of our kids. Um, you, know, you put a bunch of 16, 17, 18 year old kids out here and their minds go to both ends of the spectrum here and you know we missed some things early in the game that we could have maybe had some more points, a touchdown pass here and there and we came away with nothing at those times but um, it's a great feeling to be able to put two in a row. Well, thanks a lot and congratulations on winning your second straight national, uh, state championship. Not quite a national <laughs> championship, Close we lost though. that one over in, uh, in third week, but it's a great feeling to win two in a row like this. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations. Let's send it back upstairs to Larry and Jim. Okay, Jim, here's the field goal try. Well, it's impossible to tell from our angle. The upright is just, uh, the upright's not high enough for us to get a proper read. It, so close. This might give us a better view when that thing passes. This is a great shot. Oh! Well, maybe it went over the upright. It didn't go outside it on that view, but it may have been over, and when, when it's over, you know, this isn't 3D or 4D, this is just 2D. It was so close. But the state championship goes to Braden and Southeast. What a ball game, Jim. One that, uh, I tell you, was sticking in a lot of people's minds for a long time. These teams really fought it out as for every moment on that clock. Couldn't have been more exciting. And, uh, boy, both, both teams have so much to be proud of. Uh, Vanguard uh, fighting down to the wire after trailing by 19 points, Larry. And the Seminoles hanging on for their second straight uh, State of Florida 5A championship. Just... Uh, our hats are off to both programs, Coach Philip Yancey and Coach Paul Meckley. Just a great job by those guys and their staffs. And uh, everybody in both those communities, uh, uh, they have a lot to be proud of. Well, we thank you for joining us here at Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach. On behalf of Sports Channel, we want to congratulate the Florida High School Activities Association Class 5A football champions, the Seminoles from Bradenton Southeast High School.
I'm Larry Vitell saying so long for Jim Yarbrough, Art Schifrin, and our entire Sports Channel crew. Once again, the final score by the narrowest of margins. Bradenton Southeast 19, Ocala Vanguard 17. Congratulations to the state champs.